Welcome back. I don't know what the episode number for this show is, but it is the finale of this part. Will there be more? We don't know I, yet. I, I prefer the term ultimate. The ultimate episode? Yeah. Okay. Rather than penal, right. penal um, the previous one, you know. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's listen, it's your show. You can call it whatever it's, you want. It, it, it's the Omega and Jesse Omega. It's right. it's the Warhammer Fantasy Dirk and Ludgar ultimate episode. That's it. It could be it could uh, be it could be could be new characters in the next one. Or I just want, character. I wanna imagine that Dirk and Ludger back to back in police officer uniforms with big shades, just going ultimate <laughs> <laughs> It's the ultimate episode. Don't do drugs, um, kids. Stay in school. <laughs> yeah. So we were sort of mid mid investigation last time, I believe. Let, 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 let's sort of work through our loose ends uh, through 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 the through the. We were at mid investigation, nowhere. James. That's yeah. not even remotely true. Okay. My boy here was on his way to kill a man. Yeah, that's right. We <laughs> weren't investigating <laughs> shit. We were people were showing up and would be like. I have secret knowledge I could share with you. And we were putting our hands on their face and shoving them aside as we do the like <laughs> Dr. Livesley walk or whatever that's called towards this guy's oh, yeah. house to murder him. So well, this but, is uh, to um, uh, Steinhager, uh, right? Yeah, we're, uh, we're, we're going to kill Franz, Stein, Franz Steinhauger, who is yes, the, Heinrich the, Steinhauser's yeah. Hauger's brother. Yes, cool. In the, in the, um, in the Edel's big ring. I said yes. the outer ring. Outer ring, yes. Now, we also know that Johannes Tugen is a member of the Ordo Septenarius, despite the fact that he never elucidated that to us. And then some additional person contacted us at the last second through a newsboy to say that uh, we should so. go... Yeah, yeah. Uh, Counselor Megarius. Yeah, that was so, who Tugen pointed the finger at. Yes. Yes. And, and he said, hey, we should talk. I'm at this restaurant. And we sent the little newsboy back and said, okay, cool. We'll be there, you know, in a little bit. Stay there. I mean, look, I know this is a pre-written module, but James absolutely dicking us over and having both sides lie to us repeatedly would absolutely be in character for him. So <laughs> ignoring everybody and killing this guy for money is definitely in character for you, at least. Not for me, but I'm Listen. just... I'm just going along with it. I didn't make any promises to this guy not to snitch on him and turn him into the church, so. You could take the cash. I'll take his confession. Okay. Okay. Yeah. No I mean, I, we're I we're want better corrupt better cop, weapon. good cop. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sure. All right. Listen. <laughs> I was going to say something that probably. Uh, well, we'll just, we'll just we'll move on. Really? As well. Oh yeah, you better. Uh, now I think I'm on the same wavelength as you. We better move on. <laughs> All right, so we're literally striding up on uh, not Albrecht, Franz. Franz, yeah, Franz. Yeah, we're we're striding up on Franz. Yep. Yes. Okay. No worries. So the house itself, Adel Ring is like the noble, or not? It, it's the wealthy district of such. You know. So we're talking about fully detached houses, mansions in most cases. Um, so certainly, um, yeah, as a, as a merchant concern, um, yeah, the, the, they're not the wealthiest family. So there, there are certainly like, you know, for, for city councilmen, much bigger houses around, but you're still talking about like a two story, uh, probably brick home on grounds, um, with a, uh, a 15 foot high wrought iron fence around the grounds. Um, so the, the gates are closed because it, it is like the early evening at the moment. Um, there is a sign on the fence that says beware of dogs. Uh, and probably you know, a short look around, you can sort of see uh, a trio of, of guard dogs wandering around the, the guns. Not not attended by handlers, just, you know, wandering the guns themselves. Probably, probably sniffing things, digging things up, like you know, doing, doing dog things. Sure. Um, the house has... I'd say minimal lighting on it, such like, you know, it's not like a fully occupied house at night. There's probably maybe only two or three rooms that you can see from the from the road have uh, candlelight in the windows. Um, is there any, so at, like at the gate, is there any form of like 
to like call up, like like a bell or like a guard or like a in anywhere Um, that we can go. Hey, we're here to see. so there, there is, there is like a bell with like a hanging knocker as such that probably, you know, you could probably ring quite loudly. Uh, I mean, Mm -hmm. the the house is probably set back about 40 feet from the, um, from the entrance. So hopefully I actually probably, it's probably done up where you've got, you've probably a cord you pull here and it rings a bell inside. They've dug a channel. They've dug a channel for it in down the path. Yep. So you ring the bell. Yeah, I think so. I look at him. Okay, I mean, I watch him as he rings the bell, and I go. You ring the bell, eh? <laughs> I guess someone had to. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, there's like a, a a moment later. There's like you, you sort of see like someone carrying around a candle um, inside the house, and and the front door opens, and a a single figure walks out and walks towards the the gate. Um, the man looks to be probably in his mid seventies. Uh, definitely has the sort of, of countenance of like a manservant or butler. Yeah. Uh, like he's you know, not in like a full on uniform, but certainly like you know, just like it looks like a living living um, housekeeper basically. As he approaches the gate, uh, can I help you, sirs? Uh, yes, is uh, Er Steinhager in? Uh, I'm afraid he's out for the evening. Can I <sighs> take a message or be of any assistance? Uh, well, do you know where he went? We have we have an urgent message from his brother. Oh, I see. Uh, he told me he'd be back shortly after midnight. Um, I I don't keep track of his affairs as to where he was going. He was picked up by a carriage. I see. Uh, would you like to leave a mm-hmm. message with me from his brother? Or should I have him reach out? Wh- which brother, sorry? Uh, Heinrich. Heinrich, okay. Um, well, I... Well, would you like him have me have him reach out to Heinrich, or would you like to leave the message with me? Um... Uh, but have him reach out to Heinrich when he when he returns. Well, well, and and your name, sir? Uh, or are, you, are, you, are you just a messenger? Sorry. Uh, well, yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm just a messenger. Okay. But, but I'm not, nice to meet you. <laughs> and he he grabs the hilt of his sword and he said, "And this is the message." He stabs the ball. <laughs> he, he like he like hands you like four pennies through the gate to yeah. like a tip for the dropping the message. Yeah. Like, Amazing. Would you like to leave the message with me, <laughs> I, mean, I could. <laughs> I could leave the message with you, but uh, it's not going to get me on my 20 gold crowns. <laughs> um, yeah, and so I'll, I'll take the I'll take the pennies. And then uh, as, you know, when he turns around and goes back inside and I go, so he's definitely going to that cult meeting tonight. We knew that already, though. Yeah, well. There was we just didn't know he was already there, so. Yeah. I guess... One choice that we have is to go speak with... Megarius? Yes. Friedrich Megarius. Well, very well. All right, well, let's not lose our way in our mind. I would like you both to make perception rolls as you're heading towards the the, the Golden Trout, I think was where the invite was to. The Golden Trout. What a name. It really evokes sort of... Seaside restaurant feeling. Hey, there we go. Okay, marginal success. Uh, exception. Extremely marginal success here. Right. Good success. Okay, it's a, a margin of of three hundred percent. Yeah, it's a margin of three. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. All right. So as you are making your way. Um, it's not a guide you see. It's sort of like just a, a, a bill poster has been you know, hired to like go and stick up signs and such. You see a, on a nearby um, gas light pole, a bill poster putting up a sign which has a relatively crude drawing of the two of your faces. And it says, um, wanted for murder, contact the town guard if seen, do not approach, considered dangerous. Hmm. Does it say... Who posted this, or just the town guard? Right, it's, it's from the town guard, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's from the town guard. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Corruption uh, at the highest levels. Yeah. <laughs> we we gotta go scorched <laughs> scorched earth, man. This uh, this entire town is corrupt. So let's go meet with one of the highest ranking members of the town in a very public location, and definitely probably kill him. 
in public in front of people yeah well hey <laughs> listen if, if if we're going if we're going to jail for murder we might as well make it true <laughs> <laughs> Wow, isn't that the plot of Double Jeopardy? I think so. I think so. <laughs> that, is, that is such an awful movie, too. Oh, my God. Uh, also, I, I think not how the law works, but okay. Um, <laughs> should we make any attempt to hide our identities at all? Like, even just wearing cloaks? Or are we just going to roll up in the golden trout like this? Uh, I mean, where are we going to get where are we going to get cloaks at this time of night? I look around for a cloak vendor. I mean, it's no, look, it's it's okay. Halloween here, right? Yeah, it's, that's right. Yeah, yeah. It's, you can start, yeah, I, I, look, covering but, your features at night time enough to avoid easy detection is is a simple task. Sure. In this environment, you know. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's go for it. We find the local street vendor who sells us ridiculous hats and large, feature obscuring cloaks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Big, uh, big, like. Uh, you know, I, you look like I Sherlock, like, and I look like Watson. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, like I just imagine like uh, the Bretonian hats, so like basically like the French, like you know, the, the, like <laughs> one side is up, and there's a huge like feather out the back. Oh so we both we both just look. We're like speaking Bretonians. of Bretonian the back, yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> like we dress up as Bretonians. We just say just sweet a lot. <laughs> We're what's, committing a false flag operation. Yes. What's uh, what's Bretonian for? Uh, the lady sends her regards. <laughs> All right. Uh, All right. Uh, suitably attired, we attend the Golden Trout. All right. Uh, so the Golden Trout is actually a picture. Let me see. Oh, no, was, oh great. <laughs> I'll show you. I'll show you the picture that's in the book. Okay. Uh, is it uh, just about? It's just the sign that hangs on the door. <laughs> oh, that's fine. Yeah, it's a trout. Yeah. It is a trout, and it's golden. Yeah. Uh, a high-class eating and drinking house frequented by many of the town's wealthier merchants and visiting nobles. The golden trout consists of three separate buildings connected by covered walkways. The two largest are the, are the club's dining chambers, comprising both a large communal dining room and a number of private rooms, and the lounge room has come to read, drink, read, and discuss weighty matters. Nestled between these lies a building with the kitchen, cellar, and staff quarters, which is markedly less salubrious than the other two. There you go. Salubrious. Um, yeah. That's a it's a it's a it's a um uh one dollar word, definitely. Um all right, uh so you head to like the Mater D, I imagine, to because uh, it is a sort of place that has like, you know, a person that will tell you where to be seated at the front. Mm -hmm. Uh good evening, gentlemen. Are you dining with us this evening? Uh, we are here to meet uh, uh, council, councilman, councillor, councillor McGarrius. We are expected. We have an appointment. <laughs> um, he, he looks at these nice. Ah, uh, are you uh, Herr Dirk Einbecker and Herr, uh, I'm sorry, Lord uh, Ludger Bauerreiter? We do not use those names in the public at the moment. There is intrigue afoot. Mm. Um, I, I'm afraid that uh, uh, Hemagirius uh, left suddenly, but he did leave uh, a note for you. I do well, gasp audibly, yeah, yeah. but very Frenchly as well. Make sure that YouTube algorithm, make sure that it says gasp Frenchly. Frenchly. <laughs> I mean, definitely this, in French. This, this guy should work out whether he thinks that Barrel Rider is a very, is a very Bretonian name. name. I feel yeah. like maybe we do have, like... I was gonna say we probably do have Bretonian, you know, like distant cousins. Well, do, you, do you speak? Do you speak Bretonian? I think one. Of, I, I do. Yeah, we, 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 we both do. do. We both speak Bretonian. Both speak, yeah, Pretty okay, well, yeah. actually. <laughs> and and Wastelander. Yeah, there you go. Um, all right. So yeah, he hands you a sealed note. Um, would you still wish to dine here, sirs? I'm afraid that if the councillor is not here. We must be away, unless this note specifically has instructions to remain here and dine. All right. Well, I mean, the note's quite long, so I, I imagine you sort of step to one side to, yes. to, to have a look at it. I'm guessing that at the end of it, it does not say, you should remain where you got this note and have yeah. dinner on me. Yeah. Uh, it says, uh, sirs, I'm, under, I'm, I'm coming to understand that you are the men who uncovered 
the ritual space beneath uh, Steinhager's properties. When Chugan first came to us from Nolm, he told us that he told us that with our help, his sorcery could influence the economy of the empire. Bogenhafer would become great again, greater even than Marienburg, and we would all become rich beyond our wildest dreams. This is why the Auto Septenarius was established, and the lower ranks are no more than a smokescreen. Everything was going according to Tugan's plan until you discovered the temple uh, under the Steinhager offices. I was instructed to reassure you, to make you go away, so that the preparations for the ritual to make us all rich could carry on. The ritual will take place tonight. I don't know where. Um, I don't know where yet, but I will get word to you as soon as I can. Tugan said that a human sacrifice is necessary to prepare for the new temple, and that was too much for me. I didn't realize anyone would have to be killed. You must help me. Going to the authorities is useless, as Chugan and the inner circle control them all. You are my only hope. It's not safe. To, it's not safe for me to stay here. Come to my home in Adelring, straight away. <clears throat> So I turn to the maitre d' and say, Apologies, the counselor has summoned us to a third location. Uh, and then I step outside so that we are just out, just like in the shadows of a lamplight, you know, in that exact area that the camera would get good enough lighting on us, but we would still look shadowed in the shot. And I say, Ah, there's nothing like taking us to a third party location that they control completely and also tell us do not go to the authorities because they are all under someone's control to prevent us from summoning any allies. Uh, this is a suspicious message, but if true, we must go along with this plan, do we not? We it is hard to believe that the church would also be going along with Tugan, I think, but according to this, they may have turned against us as well. There may be someone uh, powerful at the top controlling the rest of the church. I mean, it would seem that the greed of the locals uh, has turned their eyes away from the light of Sigmar. So it would seem. You're not doing your Bretonian accent. Oh, I'm, I am very. I am. No, that's not Bretonian. Uh, well. <laughs> that's all right. Comically, like, Here. that's Sharp's Rifles level of French for sure. Yeah. Just say hon 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 a lot, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> all right, now we're Monty Python? <laughs> ba baguette. <laughs> Omelette du fromage. Omelette du fromage? That's my favorite. <laughs> then the Mater G's like, oh, actually, that's a specialty of ours. Here. <laughs> Eggs with cheese is your specialty? <laughs> Listen, man, <laughs> Not a very fire. good restaurant. Certainly not a very good seafood restaurant if your specialty is <laughs> eggs with cheese. Uh, well, uh, what do you say we go spring this trap? That's definitely a trap. Should we make any attempt to... <clears throat> Sorry, I forgot. I'm actually somewhat German, but now I can't remember how to do it. You know what? I'm nowhere near as German uh as i could be and certainly my cousin red sparrow rider doesn't have any accent at all he's perfectly uh it, well he doesn't have an accent it's just mid mid atlantic imperial yeah. what's the what's the yeah. ocean that's north Trans of the Trans empire oh uh the sea of claws <laughs> Colossian mid Colossian accent <laughs> <laughs> All right, so anyway, I'm going to speak in the natural accent that I have when I'm at home. I'm a little embarrassed to bring it out in the Empire, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh... Should we... gather some intel by, like, circling around the house looking for an alternative, not go through the front door sort of deal? Or yes. should we assume that this guy's on the up and up? Um, I think that this is, you know, his message could be honest it could be accurate or it could be just a uh, another uh another red herring to draw us further into this trap and another brick in the wall while we're chasing him to the restaurant to his house we're just burning time as well but he is our only lead currently to find the location of the new temple yeah that's what makes me curious why would they go to a new temple 
right? I don't know. They already have, we know where access to the temple currently is, right? Like, we know that if we go back inside of what's his name's house, Albrecht we, yeah, and uh, uh, Fra Franz and Heinrich. Franz, the Steinhagers. Yeah, we know it has direct access there. It would be weird. Like, they have us on the run. They have the authorities looking for us. Why would they go to a, a third party site? They yeah. could just go back to where they have already prepared. I agree. Um, I'm, I, and I mean, I think, I think, unless we get some sort of uh, huge clue here at Megarius's house, yeah, I think we, that that's where we go after this. How late is it? Like, if we go here, are we gonna miss midnight? No, we, we're talking like it's like nine thirty p.m. Okay, all right. Yeah. Then I feel better about going to this guy, and if he's like, ah, I'm not here, but my my body man's sending you to another location, we just go back and search the old temple. Right. AP, give me a give me a law theology role as the plus zero. This would help if I had holy visions to see holy sites, but all right, lore theology at a plus zero. Impressive failure. Incredible. What a failure. Wow. <laughs> uh I would like to use Did my f fortune and fate not reset. Uh, well, I mean, like, I have no mechanic to reset them, so you just have to put it back. Uh, you know, I need to. So, which one was two? Is it fate so, or fortune? So, for, yeah, so, so fate never changes. Fortune is the one you spend every game, and okay. So, I want to. Can I spend that now to like reroll yeah, so or you, something? So your, fate, your fate should be two, and fortune should be two, and when you spend it, you spend a point of fortune. Okay, I spend a point of fortune. Yeah. Okay, and then I reroll. Yeah. Sigmar. I know you're fictional, but so are these dice. No. So, I mean, fundamentally what I was asking you, Roland, I'll tell you this, because effectively, it's to see, it's, you're talking about magic, you don't, have, you don't have any skills around magic, but it was more to see whether your knowledge of like, just, you know, theological ritual would give you any sort of insight as to how magical ritual might work. But no, I'd say that- The, the answer the, is the, I have the, no the idea. Gap, yeah, the gap, the gap is too broad for you to cross. It's not just that it's broad, it's that, <laughs> When it comes down to it, I'm literally like one step above an altar boy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this guy over here is like, I'm a full fledged soldier, and I'm like, I don't know, guys. Uh, I think that's in the Bible. Let me check the scriptures real quick. <laughs> well, because aren't you also like 18? Yeah, I'm pretty young. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we go so... to Megarius and we try to swing around the sides, maybe around back. I don't know yeah, if there's case, like a fence. House. I don't know okay, if he's living so... in a townhouse. No, no, look, once again, he, Megarius is a counselor. He's very wealthy. Like, yeah. he, his house makes um, uh, Steinhagers. Steinhagers' house look, look pit, like a pit, you know. It, it's a like trading a house? Ooh. It, it's, it's a, it's a multi winged, you know, mansion ah. um, on, on substantial grounds. Um, yeah, once again, fenced with, you know, there's a fountain in his front yard, for example, between like the, the, the mm. gate and the actual entrance to the house. So um, although there, sorry? This dude is uh, cream of the crop. Yeah, though, so the gate is open, but there is a guardsman, like a town guard standing at the gate, not not a, uh, like a private car, but like, um, and I'll, I'll take intuition rolls from uh, both of you, please. Plus mm. 10, in fact. Intuition. Plus 10. Sherlock music is just playing for me. Nice. nice. Okay, so you would say, so, so, so you, I, don't know, I don't know how you've done this, but you've seen a few crime scenes. You know that this is a uh, effectively this this is a crime scene where a crime has occurred. The you know the the the, the investigative forces have, have moved out now and they've just left like a single guy. He, you know he's not actively investigating the crime. He's just like the night shift guy told to stand here and if anyone comes here, ask them what their business is and find out you know who might have been coming to see whatever happened here tonight. Um, so he's just he's just there to make sure nobody comes on the property at least through the front gate. But you know there there is evidence around that there has been. Like you know, a police or a guard's wagon, a lot of foot traffic, um, probably even like a um, uh, you know a mortuary wagon sort of thing. So we're so yeah. Go All ahead. right, I'm gonna run something by you, Spoon. 
a truly insane plan. Okay. I love it already. Let's do it. I am not good at stealth or deception. I think mm -hmm. you and I both know that. I think you know that if we have to roll rolls for something like that, one or both of us are just going to end up failing. Mm -hmm. I think that there is a pretty good chance that Megarius is dead. Yes. Right? I agree. We can go with a different tack here. Okay. My suggestion is we go in with full force and bluster, mm -hmm. saying that we're here on behalf of Alprecht Kessel, Witch Hunter, okay. investigating the crime scene. We don't give our names. Okay. We just we just keep pointing to a very official looking piece of paper signed mm -hmm. by Megarius, right? Mm -hmm. And we just say we need to get in there immediately. Do all you know. I, 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 yeah, yes, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> like, no one's gonna uh, believe yes. this. I'm not we're, six foot one. We're, yeah, we're definitely yeah, we're definitely witch hunters here to investigate uh the ritual sacrifice. No, of, I didn't we're not saying we're witch hunters, we're saying we work for the witch hunter. Gotcha, okay. Yeah. We're associates of the witch hunter here to investigate. I mean, I'm wearing an amulet of Sigmar, you're a soldier. This probably isn't the first time this guy's encountered an adventuring party on behalf of a higher official. You know what I mean? It's the Warhammer universe. Hero units wander around between towns performing spy missions in order to root out Sylvanians all the yeah. time. Yeah. You've played Total Warhammer. I'm gonna say, I, I don't carry cash, and I certainly don't carry coins anymore. But when I pick my wallet, somehow an American nickel fell out. <laughs> so. Crazy. Crazy. You know, it's funny. I... I also don't carry a lot of cash, but I also did spend all of my available cash today at a community charitable fireman's barbecue. Uh, and I was like, wow, amazing. I spent exactly the amount of money I had in my wallet. <laughs> uh, it's, hard to, it's hard to do in America where you've got like, you know, you can pay with cents on the things. Yeah. Ugh, cents? Yeah. Ugh. <laughs> well, like the smallest nomination here is five cents, so... Yeah. There is no sort of like, you know, three three Penny. pennies. Yeah. Wow. I think it's interesting yeah. that you think that we can buy things for pennies nowadays in this well, just, economy. But just, 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 you know, when things cost like six dollars ninety seven, you know, whatever yeah. Or, yeah. and you end up with you end up with a whole I always end up with a bunch of pennies because I, I never try to make up I never try to just count out the seven pennies, I just get yeah. three back. So anyway. And yet the metal in the penny is worth more than the penny. <laughs> yep. All right, so uh, I love the plan. Let's do it. Um, yep. So, <laughs> uh, is there anything that you change about your appearance to do this to to, to go with this? Uh, I mean, we're still wearing our Bretonian hats and our oversized cloaks, and you know, I'm gonna try to do that thing where I put the paper in front of my face and keep yep. pointing to it. You know, a lot of bluster and bluffing. Okay. So I, I'm going to check because this is, I think, a perfect example of using... Because you guys are both higher status than this guy. Yes. So mm -hmm. using status to influence... Oh, a, God, uh, please. If that is a role that's much easier... If, if it's higher than a 30%, we're well, much more have, likely. You both, you both have the noble blood talent. Yes. So, yeah. you know, these, these, these are things that should help you then. Um, By the way, I'm not just... I'm not only not 18, I'm 16. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, yeah. I like it because that means that Rens is almost twice as old as disgusting. Alright. I'm also five foot five. I guess I'm a short king. Yeah, yeah. I still got time for that growth spurt, you know. Well, you know, let's uh provided we survive. Where is this uh, status? That's something my, my messenger's lighting up. I, I, I don't know if any, anyone saw the uh, the fact that the tenth edition box set was launched was announced yesterday. Uh, oh yeah, Connor Hughes so, is talking to me about that. Yeah, so it's uh, various messenger groups. I'm one of. Uh, I'm going to have to be mute this um, notifications. I believe it's. Uh, it was called uh, Leviathan. Was the name of the box? Leviathan. Yes, that's right. This, bad. this book is badly uh, indexed. Uh, status. Here we go. The effects of status.
on page 153. All right, so... All right, we can we can translate it basically into just a, 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 a outright bonus on the test because effectively um, you are uh, that much higher than him that you can sort of throw out words he has no idea what they mean that sound official. Mm -hmm. So I, mean, I don't know, I don't know how much you want to roll for this or do you want to just give me the gist of what your argument is and we'll, we'll roll it then. Uh, I mean, I think I think Ludger is probably taking the lead on this, and then and then I think basically Dirk is going to wait a like a, a few seconds for like Ludger to really get into a spiel and then he's going to push past him yep. and, and like, uh, you know, bully this guard into letting okay. him. So what's it going to be? You know, you know, we're going to role play it. You're going to, I, I am going to, we're going to do a brief role play. I'm just okay. centering myself for okay. a moment. All right. So I'm, I, as as we watch it walk into the torchlight, I shift into like full like processional level, full back, standing up straight, walking like I'm meant to be here. The paper is out in front, and I'm using that to shadow my face. And I go, "We are associates of Albrecht Kessel, the witch hunter. He has sent us back to this town in order to investigate this incident." Uh, as you can see here, we are expected by Megarius, and I keep pointing to his signature, and I've, I've, you know, the top part that says Dirk Einbecker and, and it's, is, 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 is it, you know, like, I've let that fall back so he can't identify us, and I'm just like, as you can see, we are expected to meet with this man immediately, my associate here is, uh, and then, like, I'm trying to, like, block for Dirk so that he doesn't see Dirk's face. As Dirk is going in, like I'm not trying to hide Dirk. Dirk is larger and taller yes. than me, but I'm trying to make it so that like paying attention to Dirk is difficult. Yeah. I'm I'm basically like 1990s, early 2000s animation, like blocking this guy cartoonishly. <laughs> Real goofy movie stuff. All right. I also start using words like ecumenical, ecological. Uh, uh, Medical. defenestration. Um, <laughs> right, but yeah, and you and you guys are working together on this basically, so you're assisting. Yes. Okay, so uh, it's going to be either a charm or an intimidate test. Um, whoever does the roll, they're going to be at a plus 40 for their roll. I so think it'll be status. intimidate at plus 40. How do I uh, oh uh modifier forty? Yep. Good thing I've still got that backup for when I blow I got a plus oh my god, I rolled a sixty-nine. Nice. <laughs> oh, oh and I needed nice. a seventy. <laughs> oh, um all right, so with a marginal success, I will say that yeah, he'll certainly let you in, but he will record this information like yeah, that, that you were here, whatever whatever details you're given. Otherwise, if you want to spend a fate point to increase your success all by one. He'll just hand wave you through and take this as like, okay, I guess this is what's going on. Uh, 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 oh, both from, of my not, of a point, not a pay point, but a fortune point. Sorry, a fortune can 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 that fortune point be from either of us? Yep, sure, I'm happy with that. All right, I'll I'll, okay. I'll, I'll spend it. So I'll spend it. So we. I was gonna say it's a l it's pretty early to blow both of my fortunes. That's yeah, rough. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. So he's he's just like he's completely cowed. It's like, oh, okay. Uh, uh, go on through. I, I, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to get in the way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm actually going to remain here and like get the rundown from him. You know. Okay. Now, now that you know this guy, now that Dirk successfully infiltrated, I'm going to switch to interrogation mode. Okay. I'm, I'm full on going father at the confessional. You know, I've I probably haven't given confessional, but I've probably listened in on them right so i'm just like tell me instead of my son i'm just like guardsmen what happened here okay so here you the rundown that basically um the counselor here came home from dinner um to meet with an individual apparently there was a, a, a guest came to his house according to eyewitnesses um somebody from the house started screaming bloody murder um people in the street got a good look at a person who left the property 
enough to, like, like he, he he wasn't the guy that took the report so he doesn't know but effectively they, they get they were able to give a very clear description of the person um to to the other guards um so they've been here they have removed the body um and he's just basically waiting for instructions like he, he he's, he's not the investigating officer he's just a street level officer who knows what he knows but, from gossip basically so he doesn't know what this clear description is no he doesn't but people in this neighborhood do know yeah, people people gave a clear description. Yeah. Are there any any looky loos, any neighborhood grandmas, any grandpas out fixing the wagon, working oh, yeah, there's, on there's, their there's, there's, there's people could it could have the night 02 Bronco? Yeah. Um give me an intuition test, AP. Uh plus you know plus ten. I was gonna say I should sigh, but intuition is actually my best skill by a huge margin, so and plus 10 is quite generous. Plus two. Okay. So so based on this guy's description of like the number of people that came for this description, whoever whoever did this, like conspicuously tried to be seen. Like you think if you were a murderer, you would like, you know, try and keep the shadows, but you know, this this person conspicuously um got in got into line of sight at, before fleeing. So what you're trying to tell me is they were disguised as one of the two of us when they killed. It seems seems likely. Yeah, I say very I mean, well. We... Excellent work. Tell no one we were here. This is going much deeper than you know. Black sorcery may be involved. He looks very scared. I'll Wait. make sure. Uh, uh, but but what I say is, what was your name again? I'll make sure the highest authorities hear about what you've done. Yeah. Um. Uh. Dika. His name. Uh. D Dika Bolander. Dika Bolander. All right. You know how some parties accidentally acquire NPCs that they really love to just drag around with them. <laughs> I'm going to do that to this guy for sure, James. He's going to enjoy this party whether you like it or not. Yes. Uh, okay. Um, so, Spoon, inside the house. So the front door is unlocked. They've, they've left yep. it unlocked, obviously. And, 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 yeah, and there's signs around that, you know, guards have done. But, like, it's one of those things where this is... We're talking about medieval, medieval policing, so we're not like... They, they, weren't, they weren't checking out the whole house for clues. They pretty much went to where the body was. Mm -hmm. And and that was their you know the extent of their observation. Um, so was, yeah, yeah, yeah. You find your way to this guy's office. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So effectively, there is like a, there's a bloody pool in his chair uh, and blood on the desk um, mm -hmm. in front of him. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Uh, give me a perception roll at plus twenty. Okay. Margin success. Okay. Margin so, success. Yeah. you know, as you're looking around on the um, uh, the side of the desk. So, mm -hmm. if, if he's sitting at the desk here, mm -hmm. the side, like just to his left, where the drawers are, um, in blood on the drawers has been written uh, W H S E one, and then he started either a three or a seven. Like they've done like the top slash and started to go down, but you're not sure whether it was going into a, a loop then or straight down as a seven. And, and so that was W H, H S E. I'll put it into the chat thing there as well. Hmm. H E W H S E one. Simply question mark. Maybe S. No, 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 I'd say I'd say you say either a three or a seven. Like it was either going to be WHSC okay. thirteen or seventeen. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Um, I keep I keep looking through his desk for any okay. anything else that uh, you know could be Is a clue. relevance. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So right. you might have a look here. Um, there's probably some stuff that you can find here. Um. Okay, so there's you find two letters in his desk. Okay. So let me show you the first one. Uh, 
Let me know when you've when you guys have gone through that. Interesting. Your friend. Is that, uh. Elka? Or is it? Yes. A Telka? A... Oh, sorry, it's, uh. A Telka? A Telka? E T E L K A. Yeah. Herzen. H E R Z E N. Um, so I thought I had another letter, but I think the other is just the different, something different than we just want me. Interesting. Uh, where are the Black Peaks? I guess the real question is, where's Nome? Where Nome? Uh, yeah, so, so Nome, so in, in it's, on regards, the, it's on the border of the Sylvanian Wastes. Yeah, so this is, in in, in regards to Bogenhafen, it is east. Uh, north, yeah, uh, slightly north and then pretty far east. Um, so is there a date didn't... on this letter, maybe, or like? There is not. No. Okay. Hmm. Uh, I w I will take this letter as well. Yep. Um. Yeah. So that so that that was the only letter that was in there. You also find uh, a total of uh, four gold crowns and seventeen shillings in in card currency in his desk. Heck yeah. Do we I take that shit? Do we have reason to suspect based on this letter and its sending location? And I mean, I don't know that vampires are called High Master in Warhammer, right? But I mean, that very much sounds like a Warhammer vampire thing to me. Again, with no knowledge, do we suspect that this is the work of a Sylvanian agent? It's possible. Um, the other thing I'll mention is that it, she mentioned it was from near Nuln. The, me the note you got from um, Megarius at the restaurant indicated that Tugan had just returned from a visit travel to Nuln. Mm. Yeah. Information about a ritual. Here's the. So is is the, the so when she says here's the scroll you require for the ritual you mentioned in your last letter, uh, that scroll is not included in this. No, no, it's not in this. No. Okay. So, so what it looks like here is that, uh, and I'm, I'm, it's because it's, I've had to change a couple of the modules. It's not quite obvious. This is not a letter that was sent to Megarius. Right, it was it's sent to Tugan. Megarius has stolen from Tugan. Yeah. Yes. Gotcha. Okay. That was what I thought. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. So Megarius got cold feet as soon as he learned out. As soon as he learned there was going to be a murder. Yeah. Okay. Um. I AP. Will. Yeah, sorry. While you're, out, while you're outside, um, first off, I want a perception roll for you, please, at plus 10. The werewolf coming up behind me that murdered the guy, the mercenary in the house, huh? And plus 10. Success. Okay, so two things. First plus off, this, this, is, this, is, this is without a success required. Um, you know how sometimes you get at nighttime as it cools down, you can get like a low mist? Um, especially in like you know medieval style cities that have a lot mm -hmm. of um, you know, heating coming from beneath ground, so that's sort of like three foot high mist is starting to settle in tonight. But it's got a strange greenish tinge to it tonight, um, like not not enough that you would be normally alarmed, but it just stands out as a little bit different. Mm -hmm. um, with your success, you do notice that sort of looking out over the horizon of the town, not not near the outer room, but other parts of the town, you can sort of see that telltale orange sort of glow of substantial fires somewhere in the town like which direction uh you can sort of so so on the map right now you, you're you're basically here on the map so you can sort of see them from over this direction over this direction so basically north and west of where you are now in town you can see a couple of slight different signs of you know um smoke like big like bigger fire than you would have in a city normally like more more, more than just a bonfire i mean whatever. like an incredibly dangerous fire to have in a city especially well, at, when at, at, at least a burning building if not burning buildings yeah at night during a festival yeah with a packed harbor probably 
I mean, on one hand, there might be enough spare hands to put this out, but on the other hand, if it gets out of control, that's it. Um, do we think that that's important? I think we need to put together what we've got right now. Yeah. Um, I think uh, Dirk like gives this room uh, one more once over and then is going to book it back out to uh, Luger. Okay, no worries. Uh, the guards like, did you did you find what you're looking for, sirs? Evidence evidence of uh, crimes most foul. You've done you've done good work here. Was it the councilman that we suspected behind everything? It may have been. Yes, it se it seems to be that is the case. I'm gonna quietly, but loud enough that the guard can hear. Because just in case we die, someone should get word. Yeah. I'll say, <laughs> so it was Councilman Tugan who's performing these blood rituals then. Sorry, I wouldn't know about blood The dark, <clears throat> demonic rituals then. Yes, it seems he has delved into uh, sorcery that should not be trifled with. We should inform Kessel as soon as possible. And Megarius? You, you, you hear his eyes go wide. He's dead? <laughs> Most certainly. It Very well. Even be the sacrifice they're using. <gasps> All right. I gasp audibly, and then I do a, a really well-practiced cloak swirl to pull the mist around me as well. And we, it, it's so good that the mist does that thing that like airplanes do when they're yeah, landing in mist. Cool. Yeah, it wishes around him as he steps out. He basically like follows after him as he goes out of the torchlight. Uh, again, the Sherlock music is playing. <laughs> Where do we go? I mean, obviously this fire sounds like it's important, but we don't have any ability to do anything about that. You know what I mean? It could yeah, just be so random. There were the letters that Megarius drew in blood, I'm assuming after he was wounded almost unto death. W-H-S-E-1 and then either 3 or 7. W. H S E one Warhammer that's... special edition oh, coming out <laughs> the seventeenth. Uh, I think that's probably warehouse southeast seventeen, maybe. Oh wow, that's a really good guess. I'm wondering if it's something to do with Westham, the other side of the city. The we the Westham Dam. Yeah. I like your guess better. Uh, do we know if, if warehouses are marked in such a way? So warehouses have numbers, certainly. Like so mm. all, all these buildings along the the sides of the um the river called again, the the um oh, I forgot what's the, Bogan, it's, it's the, the river Bogan, isn't Bogan, it? Bogan, yeah, that's right, yeah, yeah. Um so yeah, these these are all uh these are all warehouses, these are all warehouses, the Western Dam and the Austin Dam. Okay. So, so no, I think I think you might be right. Then it might be West Weston Dam, like warehouse. So, so Austin Dam warehouses all have um, uh, odd numbers, and Weston Dam have even numbers. Oh, okay. But the we are we are given an odd number, right? Uh, yeah, because yes. it's either well, thirteen, 13, or, 13 17. or seventeen. Yeah. I agree okay. with you that it's probably warehouse then rather than Weston Dam. Yeah. Okay. So we gotta we gotta get over to that side of the city and check out this warehouse. My brain is totally stretched trying to figure out a way to get ahead of Tugan. It really feels like we're just chasing and chasing and chasing. Uh, yeah, I mean you're you're not wrong. You don't have any allies. We literally can't even go to the church. Yep. I mean, so listen, Luger. If this if 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 this next part doesn't go in our favor, I think we really have to consider leaving town. Abandoning our mission? Uh, no. Just a tactical retreat to reconsider our options. This this town is getting dangerous for us. And if, and if we die, no one will be able to bring these men to justice. I mean... I agree that someone needs to be informed. And uh, I don't think, I don't think, you know, it, 
trying to implant this knowledge in the head of a town guard is going to work. Yeah, I'm going to do something different. Um, no, look, James, this isn't Dungeons and Dragons. I don't know that my character sheet can say that I have. Oh, I have a writing kit. Never mind. <laughs> I don't know. So yeah, I'm gonna write two letters, and I'm gonna okay. I'm gonna pay out two shillings a piece. Yep. Um, I want to send a letter back to my original boss back in the imperial capital, whose name was, yeah, uh, not Max Hurst. That was the guy that we met. That's uh, no, that's too. That's not far enough along in our scenes yet. Uh, Magnus Blaster. God, who what was this guy's name? Anyway, I sent it back to the Master of Acolytes in Altdorf, um, explaining that there is a demonic cult here, that uh, Tugan is behind it, that the trading house is behind it. You know, Tugan's the ringleader. It's spread as far as known. I suspect that there might be vampires behind it. Blood sacrifice. We personally engage the demon. Like, I'm not going to... I don't know that I need to elucidate everything specifically with you, but I'm basically doing a bear all here. And I'm uh, sending a similar letter to my cousin Rents. Uh, it's, it, it lays all of that out, but then it follows with like a very um you know you should make better choices in your life i caught the game i feel like you you're doing pretty poorly this season uh we're on the second game and you know where are these wins uh you're being beaten by halflings you're doing rituals to hash hut i mean come on man like you're bringing shame to the barrel rider name anyway love ludger yes go hammerers <laughs> yes my traveling companion and i are hammerers fans <laughs> get get godric's autograph if you can <laughs> it may take may take five days for the belt for the to arrive i mean for to, to get a hold of Reds is going to be pretty difficult. He tra you know, you know, he's a world traveler. I, 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 I'm joking because five days is when we're next year to play Blood Bowl. So. Oh, of course, of course. But remember, the timeline is different. It's the it's this it's this is currently the second game of the first season, so it's like a solid three months behind. It would be amazing. Well, no, hey, the second season's a whole year ahead. So wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like it's just like a half dead Skaven. Shakily holding the letter covered in blood but, out to but, me. But, 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 but that's, that's what it could be. It could take it could take them like you know a, a, over a year to find Ritz. Yeah, 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 you know. yeah. Well, I mean, Ritz is Mister Worldwide. <laughs> Ludger is definitely Mister Three Hundred Five. Um, yeah, so I sent two letters out into the dark as a shot, just in case we fail. Uh, knowledge of this plot will not go unnoticed by the greater world. I do love the fact that you you make sure in your letter of, of um you know of, of warning you also include admonishment for his choices in life. Yeah, yeah, of course. I'm a prince yeah, of yeah. Sigmar. He's performing <laughs> chaos rituals. <laughs> All right. Look, so I don't know that I'm going to have time to send a second letter. You know what I mean? Okay. I got to get it all in all at once. <laughs> all right. So we're heading to Austin Dam. Is that correct? Yeah, we're uh, looking yes. for a warehouse 13 or 17 or something like that. Yep. No yep. worries. Okay. Uh, so are you, once again, because th there's people that are out in the street, are you taking any more care around, you know, you're going back to putting your cloaks on, for example? Yeah. Yeah. But we yeah, never took them off. We're Bretonians. still Bretonian. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, all right. So as you're making your way, um, you sort of gotten to around near, near the front of the, uh, the town hall. Um, when you round a corner, you see these fires appear to be spreading now as well. So, like, probably there's at least four or five buildings on the west side of town, and probably a similar on the, on the north side of town, which are currently burning. Um, and there's, you know, you can hear now the sounds of like bells being rung and people forming like you know bucket chains to put out the fires, and people out in the street looking for the starting fires. Uh, as you round a corner, um, you you come face to face, probably you know about about ten feet away. 
from another, another person who looks identical in every way to um, Ludger. Um, like, sa sa same clothing, same face. It's like looking in a mirror. Um, this person is clearly running from somebody else. Uh, and when they see you, they they smile evilly and then vanish from view. They just disappear. And then you see like a, a, a crowd of people carrying pitchforks and torches going around the corner and say, there he is. That's the one wait, starting wait. all the fires. So so he, he, he looks exactly like Ludger does Luka. now. Yes. Now, like in like, Bretonian yeah. uh, get up and up. No, no, not Bretonian get up. Like it, probably what you were what you were wearing earlier today. Okay. All right. So, so James, okay, you're okay, gonna try to what... pin me on this, and what I'm gonna do is, as I see the crowd going, I yell, "He went that way through the mist." Okay. Give give, give me a. Uh, let's, let's, we can do this with. We're gonna do this with leadership roll at plus twenty. Can I call upon my status? Uh, yeah, le leadership applies to status, so... I look uh, like a fancy I, yeah. Bretonian man. Okay, make it plus 40, then. I still got that fortune as backup. Hey, Big Mar, okay, bless yeah, okay. these dice. So, so you, you, you distract the crowd enough that they go charging off in another direction with their pitchforks and, and torches. I just quietly say, that's right, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're here, bitch. <laughs> Well, that's one problem solved. I suppose. I'm not really sure why the crowd is so, mobbing up and burning down buildings and such. They're not. They 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 they, they thought you were starting the fires. Ah, yeah. I see. So, I see. Yeah, some someone else started the fires dressed as you. Yes, uh, dressed. Well, I assume that it's actually a magical disguise, given that they are capable of turning invisible. Yeah, probably. Either Tugan himself or a associate of some kind. Mm -hmm. One way or another, it will be very difficult for me to stay in this particular city afterwards. Yes. As I said before, I think this is, uh, we are coming to the climax of our uh, time here in Bogenhafen. And mm. after, after the next hour or two, we should probably leave the city. Well, I'd say we should go to Kislev, but every time I hear about Kislev, it seems like there's something rotten in Kislev, I say, looking directly at the camera. <laughs> that was a good campaign. It was a good campaign. Anyway, we need to get to this warehouse, 13 or 17. Okay. So you, That's right, James. Um, We're going to warehouse 13. Yep. So uh, 13 is this one here, and 17 is this one here. So when you when you arrive out of the um, Hafenstrasse onto the Austin Dam, uh, looking at the two houses, so so Warehouse Thirteen appears to be um, basically closed up, uh, no activity around it. There, it, you notice that the crates that are out in front of it are labeled um, Crone. Oh, I don't know. I'm going to post this into uh, into uh, chat because it's the German. Cronin Windsoray Outdoor. Um, so that's Warehouse 17. Sorry, Warehouse 17 is the one that has that. That's this, this one here. Okay. Warehouse 13 has. Um, a, it, it looks to be occupied right now. So there are, there are lights inside. There are like three carriages outside. And a couple of sort of like. Um, think of default uh, Warhammer style thugs yeah. standing around. This outside. Mm, wow, I wonder uh, which one it could be. Yeah. Uh, okay, so Cronin is Crown. I don't know Windsor A. And the uh, the big the where the, the crates outside of Warehouse Thirteen are labeled with Silas Hilbury Appleford. Okay, Cronin Windsor A means Crown Winemaker. Now hold on. Tugin had something to do with wine. Wine that I poured. What was the label on it? Did it, uh, what did it say? Crown winemaker or something like no, that? No, it didn't know. Okay. And then this other one is a clearly guarded by Thug's warehouse. It's a Silas Appleby. Th Silas Hillbury Appleford. Hillbury Appleford. Yeah. Is that a person's name or is this a business? Um, It's a business. Hmm. Hmm. So do we, do we think? 
do we think this is uh you know a a case of let's put the guys you know e either let's leave the guys outside to guard us or let's leave the guys outside the wrong warehouse so they think we're so that they think we're need it to be guarded and we go into the empty warehouse that has no signs of being used i think there's no problem for uh, we've got time right checking the it, it, unguarded it's, 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 about, it's about i'd say right now it's about 10 30. yeah we've yeah, got check. time to check the unguarded warehouse there's no reason for us to get into a scuffle if we could be wrong i agree and again this councilman could still be lying to us this could all just be i mean it, we literally were just led into a setup to kill me yes, you know what i mean sure. like yeah. this could all just be an incredible deception on their part yes but there you know it looks like there are three carriages here there steinhauger left earlier by carriage i feel like this is the place let's just take a peek inside crown and windsor i yes Altdorf. okay um give me a perception roll as you get close I just heard the uh, church bell go off. It must be 11 o'clock now. <laughs> no, okay. Which, church bells definitely distract me, it looks like. <laughs> okay. Pigeons oh, went you, flying you, past you, John Wu style. Yeah. You reach the door of the warehouse. It's locked from the inside. Okay. But there's no windows or anything like that? No? Um, like a so broken board? There are like shutters that are that are closed at the moment. That is like once they have like a handle inside, you could probably pry off a shutter from the outside. And nah, nah. no, what? no sounds coming from inside or anything. Uh, not with your perception roll. Okay, yeah, figures. What is is there any way to approach this thug guarded warehouse that just? You know, like they're all clearly at the front door, and there's like a oh, loading so, dock. So, this this is a dock. There's boxes and crap. Like, like like stealth here. It, it's nighttime. There is a mist. There yeah. is distraction elsewhere in the town from the fire. You know, there's crates and crap everywhere on the docks. Like uh, any sort of stealth rolls here would be at substantial advantage. Let's shall we try and sneak into warehouse thirteen. Yes. Who knows what artifacts might be stored there. I hear this is where Eureka keeps all the good shit. <laughs> Alright, so um, you, you, we can take one roll to cover both of you, because um, effectively it's like you know, one person's leading. Mm -hmm. So one of you may make a stealth roll at plus 40. Uh, that would So I'm at 41 normally. So... I think, AP, you want me to do that? Yes. Yes, I do. Astounding success. All right. You lose track of yourself. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, so look, you, you solid snake from box to box. Um, yeah, every time there's like a distraction for the guards. Uh, you find your way to the... So there's no way to get to the door of the warehouse without going past it, like within within clear visual range of the guards mm -hmm. um but there are once again windows in the warehouse um that are closed but could be open from the outside but a bit of prying for example yeah um at, at this point now you can hear chanting from inside the warehouse um a number of voices probably at least or maybe a, a maybe half a dozen or so voices all chanting mm -hmm. um you also now see a, a carriage pull up out the front um two more thugs get out of the carriage and then lift out like a a long stack that you would guess would be a body in a sack. Although you do see like a, uh, a you know, some slight movements from the from the sack as well. They mm -hmm. appear to be carrying it inside the warehouse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, how many guards are there now? now. Uh, well, so two outside, two inside. And the two outside are carrying the sack. No, so the two the two outside the ones there previously. The two uh, two of them arrived in a carriage got out of the carriage took picked up a body in a, a sack and they took the body inside the warehouse so they're now inside because this is the this is their live sacrifice yeah i was just wondering if maybe we could 
I mean, if it's already inside, the plan won't work. But if we could, like, get the attention of people nearby going, Hey, there, you know, there's a guy in a sack over there. Look, it's really obvious. Oh, look, there's, there's maybe a couple of long showing around, but there's not any like, sort of large groups of people. Like, like the large group of people mm. here really use these these thugs and the people inside. So it's, it's, a, it's a warehouse history tonight. Most things are shut down. Yeah. Uh, so I think uh, Dirk is going to pry open one of these windows. Okay. No worries. Um, look, there's enough noise from inside that you can um, that I don't need you to uh, make any rolls yourself. You 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 basically pry up one of the bars, uh, one one of the one of the slats. Now, inside the slats are metal bars. So, climbing through the window would require mm -hmm. getting off more slats and a bit of contortion. It, it, mm -hmm. it would it wouldn't just be like leaping through a window. Yeah. Um, but certainly seeing through no problem at all. Yeah. Um. So the inside space of this warehouse has been cleared out. So all the boxes have been pushed to the side. And a a space similar to um, the the original space you saw beneath the, uh, uh, the the merchant house has been established here. So the same octogram on the floor. Um, there are people all around in uh, in robes. Uh, you see, uh, so so seven in total, um, one for each of the um, the. Um, so seven people in robes, one for each point at the start, and then one person who. It's not wearing rose, and it's just sort of standing by in the like in the eighth point, just watching. Um, he doesn't look like a nobleman; either. he just just looks like a, a regular guy, basically. Um, mm. And yeah, so the, the the ritual space has been drawn with salt and blood on the ground, um, mm -hmm. and these two guards are basically like in the they, they put the bag down on the ground, and they're currently pulling out um, a an un, I want to say unconscious a, at the edge of consciousness woman. She's clearly been bludgeoned to the point that. She is in a you know mixed state of consciousness, and they they are picking her up, and they are carrying her towards the circle. You mm -hmm. know that they they take specific care to avoid stepping on any of the lines that make up the octogram. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Uh, uh, Chugan is Chugan is among the, the the ritual casters here. Yeah. So these these crates that we're climbing on on the outside, these are the um, appleberry. Yes. If, if you pry up the top one, they they appear to contain um bottle, like glass bottles of juice. Juice, damn. Okay, all right. I have an idea. We need to go get some of that wine from from the Cronin Cronin Windsor Eye. Look at the care they're taking to not disrupt the circle. Yes. How close are we to just like pushing a stack of crates over and then juice just oh. flowing into the blood? We're on I, the outside of the building. You're on the outside. You're on yes. The inside, okay. Yeah, so. but there's, 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 only, there's only arms reach the window. You could just push over like that. Yeah. But we could two fist juice bottles and just start chucking yeah, yeah. them until so, it made the blood run. So I turn to him. And I'm like, obviously, you're going to want to make a Kislevian cocktail. <laughs> but, but so so let let me let me tell you what my plan is. All right. Go get some wine. Mm -hmm. Uh. Probably a couple of bottles each. Spill yeah. some. Spill enough on ourselves that we that we smell drunk as all get out. Mm -hmm. Stumble up to the thugs, stab them with daggers, uh, and then push inside into the building. And then we do your plan of of throwing these wine bottles onto the ritual circle. It mm -hmm. has the benefit of wine is also, uh, or at least alcohol is flammable. Um. Well, the good news is I do have a dagger. Yes. Um, so uh, that that is my suggestion, and then we kill everyone inside except for the uh, theoretically innocent woman. So what I will tell you is that if you take the time to go and like get bottles from the warehouse tour, yeah, and, and yet you probably won't. That they will probably finish the ritual and, before then. Well, not not finish the ritual, like oh, the sacrifice. The woman. The sacrifice is required to sanctify the space for mm. the ritual. The ritual has to go off at midnight, so you've still got like an over an hour, or probably yeah, about yeah. an hour now until this ritual. But the, 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 the sacrifice doesn't appear to be at the climax of the ritual; it's at the start of the ritual. I see. So we need to go if we're going to save this woman. We need to get. We need to. Go. So I mean, so there, there is a palpable um, magic in the air already. So some, the ritual's already begun, but it's uh, uh, certainly, and that's why they're taking care with this with the with the octogram. But what's the sacrifice. likelihood of us getting a clear shot to throw a juice bottle just to land near enough to the circle to splash on it, or maybe even 
hit one of these guys and not only splash uh juice but also maybe like you know being hit with a bottle that was thrown with great force maybe like cut them and also get their blood and just muddy the area up turn it into a real shithole okay well i, I would say that the chance if dirk did it would be about 22 percent if luca did it, it would be about 27 percent because that's your ballistic skill that's our ballistic skill mm -hmm. yeah yeah how far away are we from that fire uh it's 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 quite a ways away it's um uh maybe maybe like um two miles in, uh, into town that, so that, was, that was my other plan is, yeah. is just dousing the entire building in wine and then letting it on fire <laughs> yeah i'm thinking do 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 we have what it takes to cause a fire right now yeah so let me let me, let me rephrase that sorry your ballistic skill will be what's required to like hit a person with a bottle yeah you know, mm -hmm. to cause harm you know like like just throwing bottles at the circle of uh, the octagram on the ground is a bit easier because you just want to smash them in a general area right okay i just do that immediately right now no more discussion okay, so, you, I... so you grab a bottle and, and just fling in there okay yep so give me a, give me a ballistic test at plus 30. Okay. Uh, i'm trying to save a life and also you know i expect right, that well, yeah. Having as, to de-magic this area is probably going to be a real pain in the ass. As as Luker does that, I guess, Dirk is like, oh shit, okay, I guess well, that's what we're doing. It starts <laughs> yeah. doing the same thing. Uh, I don't have ballistics. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's on the it's main page. Yeah. It's the yeah. main... You said plus 30, James? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, ballistics skill, 27, okay. Plus 30, okay. Okay. All right, so ooh, headshot, <laughs> right in the center. <laughs> well, I mean, so so Dirk, Dirk flings a bottle in and it smashes, um, to one, uh, not enough to actually uh, disrupt the circle at all. Uh, Luca lobs a barrel in and yeah, it smashes on like one of the edges of the um the the octogram and um spreads some of the salt, and, and there's like there's an immediate palpable sense of change in the magic in the air like it's it's gone from like a sense of controlled magic to out of control magic now uh oh um that's fine that's bad so yeah, that's fine. uh the response to the people inside first off is uh like the, the guy who was not wearing robes looks straight over your way with a sense of sort of anger in his eyes um chugan like he's he, he's more focused initially on like where this has happened like he because obviously when, when a bottle smashes you look at where the bottle smashed not where it came from mm -hmm. so so his his sense is like shock and like looking for what's going on the other people in the room also get like a an oh shit sense to them about like like that they, they like they, they feel the change as well and they're sort of you know like you get the impression that they're here for wealth much mm -hmm. like magirius was and this whole sort of like oh what happens when magic goes out of control? I don't really know magic, and uh, I'm not I'm not very reassured by the by the look of, on on our lead magician's face. Yep. So, with let me tell you, let me God, tell you, I'm about to make that situation much worse, James. Let me okay. interrupt you and say, I shout loudly, "Witch Hunter Castle, they're in here!" <laughs> okay, no worries. Um, that that draws the attention of everyone except the guy who was already looking at you your way. Yeah, good. Um, all right. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna roll initiative now. Um, yes, but what about the fear and panic of people whose night is not going their way and all of a sudden they might be in a lot of shit and that running away is their only option? Yeah, I don't want to I don't want to fight four guards and then a magic well, caster and his seven friends. I'm we'll hoping <laughs> Okay. Uh, so what's me... what's uh initiative again? Okay, so let me well, I think I want to I need to build an encounter first so that you can okay. actually um let me put your things onto the board um and listen I'm james gonna... also have we earned yeah. any xp up to this point <laughs> uh, no, no, not this point, no. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm oh no there's a maid in here oh no oh no that's my death thing that's my death uh -oh. sign <laughs> more will send uh -oh. a maiden oh uh -oh. no oh no <laughs> Oh, this just became so much what less boggers. Uh, let's see. Oh, no. Because <laughs> mine is also, thy last exclamation shall be love. <laughs> That's all right. I, I, don't, I don't love this woman. Yeah, but you all could right. say, but I you, love you like a brother. <laughs> let's go down fighting together. Listen, no. See, <laughs> I think... Uh, you're uh, you're going to get sad in the stomach and you're going to go, Mom! <laughs> no, Dirk, Dirk turns to Luke and says... 
Uh, Sigmar says, I'm going to get out of this one, but uh, you're fucked. <laughs> okay. All right. We went to Braveheart? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so we're really we're jumping we're around movies. here. Let me think how I could get Saving that. Private Ryan in here. Yeah. We're just going to do all the 90s movies. Oh, man. I turn to one of the guards and I say, What is the Matrix? Is the Matrix? <laughs> <laughs> it's like uh, cold, cold night. Sometimes the frost makes the sword stick in the shell. Oh. So let's see. If you go to the, do you have the battle tab on uh, like the the fist icon on um yep. the second icon? Yeah, okay. yeah, so yeah, 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 yeah. There and hit yeah. roll initiative to AP character and spoon character. Oh, I got a thirty-five point thirty. That sounds pretty mid. Oh no, these motherfuckers. Okay. Who the fuck is Gideon? Yeah. Okay. Their icon looks pretty wild. I'd love to be able to zoom in on it. All right. So, you see the pink um, horror? It is, is the pink horror. <laughs> oh, amazing. And I see, uh, let's see. Go back to. Mm. Right, right now, what he looks like is. I'll give you a character right away. So, he looks like this right now. Mm hmm. That's, that's what the, that's what the guy looks like. I, it's nothing for me. Uh, yeah, nothing slow. The the oh, image okay. is uh, the JPEG is is busted. It's all right. Uh, okay. He just looks like a normal person. Okay. What about this one? Yeah, that's a that's yeah. a that's a demon for sure. Okay, no worries. But he's throwing up the really horns though. Normal person. Yeah. One sec. Sorry, I got my son asking me a question. Why do I have like a screaming face on my? Because you, the last time your sheet was updated, you were running away from that same demon, and you haven't removed the condition from it. Uh, okay. Oh, that's yeah, right. Yeah, there, we, there we go. Fear removed. There we go. All right. So, um, all right. So the first one person to act is uh, Tube. So um, <clears throat> he uh, looks to the the other guy. Uh, and then yells at the others to avert their eyes. Boy, it kind of feels like I should avert my eyes as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, do you want to avert your eyes? Uh, I think. So wait, if it's we're... Gideon is is yelling to everyone to avert their eyes. No, no, no Tugan. 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 Tugan he, he, looked at, he looked at Gideon first, and then and then looked at the others and, and yelled at them all to avert their eyes. Yes. I mean, we already know some magics at work. The real question is, is is he going to be revealed as a demon? We don't know about the demon. That's meta knowledge. I think, I think uh, Dirk like flips his cloak up in front of his face. Yeah, I definitely don't want to get flashbanged or anything. Okay, so you, you are averting your eyes. Yeah. yeah. All right, so uh, a moment later then, you hear a sort of wet, grinding, popping sound of like bones breaking and shifting and flesh tearing open. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. you know what? I would like you both to make a plus 20 cool test. Is that a skill or a... We've definitely, a we've definitely heard skill. this sort of thing yeah. before. Yeah. It's it, it's uh, one of those things where it's like, you know, you, 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 you want, you, you don't want to look, but you know, it's like when you drive past a car accident, you don't want to look because you might see a severed head, but you want to look because you might see a severed head. Yeah. Jesus, what are you? What is it with you and severed heads? <laughs> All right, so you both managed to avoid. Uh, now I need to. I need to do a cool test for the cultists as well because they, they were all. They all yeah, they all look. Can and, you yeah. give a penalty for being afraid of witch hunter Alpret Kessel showing up as well? Uh, let me see. They actually have what their we thought the stats are. So we... Look, James, I'm a junk rep player. My plan in any large group situation is to cause as much stress as possible to make everyone panic and run away so I can single someone out. Give, give me a um, give me a uh, perception roll, please, both of you. Uh, we look directly at him now. Uh, astounding failure. <laughs> uh, okay, no worries. That's cool. It was it was it was to hear something specific. So. Um... I want to do 5d100. Oh, there are, okay, there are 
Seven, uh, it's off upside seven, so I need to do 60. God, we're gonna die doing our jobs. You know that, Spoon. We're gonna fucking die. Uh, okay, so immediately after that, you hear five people all scream with primal fear, and then, like, you can then hear all hell breaking loose inside the, uh, inside the room. Okay. Um, listen, right. I, I think our job is done here, my dude. <laughs> all right, uh, AP, your turn. Just to be clear, the situation is as follows. We are outside of a lit warehouse in the dark, in the midst. There are two guards between us and the doorway. And then there are the eight people inside, one of which is now a demon, and the woman in the bag on the floor. And the, and the, and the, two, and the two guards that brought her in. Yes, and those two that brought her in. Um... God, I wish our job was done here, but like, what what is a victory condition for us, Spoon? We've stopped the ritual. We've definitely outed the demon. I don't think we can take this demon. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, sure. it yeah, seems yeah, impossible. We have no allies in town. What do what do we get? Who do we eliminate here, or do we just run? Uh, so I think if we can eliminate either Tukin or the the guy who seemed to be the head spellcaster who like I mean but that's the guy that's now the do I, I mean do we think that guy's the demon now I mean James do we like peek over our cloaks and there's definitely a demon that's that used to be you you, you tell me that's your turn you think <sighs> I need to look? yes I do okay nice I would like a fear test at minus 10 so, which I believe is just a will, uh, is it willpower or cool? Let's see what we see for fear. Um, let's see, fear. This decision is about to be taken out of my hands as to what I do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's a, yeah, it's a, it's a minus 10 cool test. Okay. Do resolve or resilience have any play at this point? I uh, believe. I don't know what they do. It's more, it's more about it's more about wounds. You okay. can spend certainly fate and fortune can be used to um to uh, adjust the results. Okay, and and you said sorry it was cool at minus ten. Yes. Sigmar, you've really been helping me out today, but this feels like the big one. Big Daddy Sigmar's got our back. I peek yep, over. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So yeah, you, you see a, duck. <laughs> you see a demonic form in there, um, and yeah, you 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 push down the primal fear that, that tells every essence of you to run. So at this point, you can see that all but one of the cultists have like absolutely flipped out at seeing the demon. Mm -hmm. the, the thugs, I don't even need to roll for them. They're they're they're, they're paid goons. They're not sticking around with a demon in the room, basically. Mm -hmm. um, they're already running. Whereas the, the cultists are more sort of like, um, they're like just you know, running to hide behind boxes or um, trying to flee. I mean, I, think I, I rolled over 90 with three of the cultists. Oh, so no. prob prob probably three of them are like just like clawing at the flesh of their own face uh, in, in primal fear, trying to like gouge out their eyes so they can't see this horror. I think um, as, you, as you look over your cloak, uh, Dirk goes... Do you do you see Fran Steinhauger anywhere? Yeah, do I see Fran? Ste we don't know what he looks like though. Yeah, well, look, hey, you know his brother. You could probably pick a you know okay. a, a brotherly brotherly connection here. So yeah, he he is probably the one the one cold which has not outright panicked. <laughs> there's 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 a win condition for you, my dude. Let's kill that guy and get the hell out of here. <laughs> I'm gonna be on twenty gold and I'm gonna be flat honest with you. I never agreed to that. You agreed to that. I will, however say don't look the same I, I believe it's the same demon right like i it's saw not, it before no, no, no it's not so oh. the other, i think, I oh, think it's like, it was basically just a flamer um this this is like a named demon as such oh, so, okay yeah. so right. a multitude of times worse i go this is a named demon here it's so much worse than the last one but friend steinhofer standing right there um in exchange of that i turn and begin fleeing immediately loudly shouting uh damon damon councilman tugan has summoned a damon on the docks he set fire to the docks with the damon 
All right, so 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 you're you're running and trying to like raise raise help. Is that right? Yeah. So look, I'm gonna be honest, James. I really don't feel everything I know about Warhammer says that a guy with a dagger and a dagger skill of 27 is not gonna be able to fight a named demon in a warehouse okay, <laughs> at right. night with one ally. I'm leaving. I listen. I saved that woman's life. I've ended this magic ritual. Kind of. Yeah. I mean, obviously, it's about to go out of control, but certainly. A despoiled city of Bogenhofen is so much worse than a there was a minor magical accident, Bogenhofen. All right, Spoon, your turn. Um, okay, so Ludger is uh running off into the night trying to summon assistance. Um I think I am going to attempt to uh put some truth to his words and, and light this build and so what I want to do is stealth down from the window. Yep. And then like like so, uh, so, 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 both the demon and Chugan were like because because AP, AP screamed about you know the, yeah yeah, the, yeah. which kind of well but, so. but 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 basically my my thinking is I want to get somewhere where I can hide and yeah. start and they basically light this warehouse on fire. Okay. Cool. All right. So, um, and, and you're and you're not looking inside the room. You're avoiding. No. You're avoiding looking inside. No. The room. Okay. Cool. All right. So let me. Let's. let's <coughs> sorry. Let's uh, encapsulate this in a plus 10 athletics roll. Okay. Okay. Uh, I will spend a point of fortune to reroll that because my okay. athletics right. is actually pretty good. Yep. Impressive success. Okay. All right. So. Um, yeah, you you quickly um, look around. You find something, some like some oil or whatever on the on the dock that's used for like um, or tarring for ships, and quickly you know set fire to it. Or whatever you have, I think you have a lantern or something, don't you? Yeah, um, yeah, we, yeah. We, we, we we have a lantern. Yeah, you bought one for the um, for going yeah, into for the, the um, for the uh, sewers. Yep, yeah, yeah, no worries. Okay, and and the fire starts. Uh, once you're confident that a fire has started on the building, are you? Oh, I'm, I'm, okay. Yeah, I'm running after Luca for sure. Okay, nice. Okay, so I I will yeah. end the combat there. Fuck this place. Okay. <laughs> um. All right. So this really feels like, like a new game plus combat. Like we're supposed to come back after we're much stronger and we have magic items and <laughs> or you know at least something more than a basic hand weapon and boiled leather armor. I have a dagger. Yeah. I, I, AP, give me a plus 10 leadership roll. And the power of God, I guess. Plus 10 leadership roll. Yep. You know what, Sigmar, I've called upon you a lot today. I, I'll let fortune and fate decide this one. Okay, now oh also, boy. both of you, see, so you should see, um, oh, you guys, okay, so I think that you, um, so it popped up saying resisting influence oh, moderate yeah. on your screen. Yeah. Okay, both yes. of you please hit resist on that because you were in a in a demonic presence. Okay. Do I do endurance or cool? Uh, how does oh how does okay? Uh, uh, they're both pretty close, but I think I'm gonna go with endurance. I gain two corruption. That is unfortunate. Oh boy. That's not great. But it didn't say how much you got. No. It said two. Did it, did it no, that's two? Oh, what yeah, it said from me. Yeah, well, no, my, Durkheim Becker gains two corruption. Uh, oh, oh it's, it's a private message. Yeah, I see now. Okay, yeah, so what, what, what yes. Okay, cool. All right. Yeah. Um, all right, so uh, we, we, your leadership role. How bad is two corruption? I, I don't think it's substantial. I will tell you what it's like. It's, it, it can be removed as well. It's a bit easier to remove than it is in 40K. Ah, there we go. Uh, corruption in the Senate. <laughs> uh, corruption one eighty two. Right. All right. Uh, corrupting. So for a human, um, let me see. So no one is upgraded. You get more corruption, then your willpower bonus, uh, plus your toughness bonus. Um, you have to make a test. So, uh, 
What is the so what's your willpower bonus plus corruption bonus? So the, the tens of your willpower plus the tens of uh, your toughness. Yeah, so tens of willpower plus tens of toughness. Uh for me that is a uh six. Okay. Um so effectively you once you once you go over six corruption points is when you have to start testing for like whether it affects your mind or your body. I um but I also have pure soul, so mine is seven. Okay, cool. Yeah. So, and, and, but then you can also do things in downtime to reduce your corruption. Good. I have a six. Cool. I'm not a pure soul, which feels wrong, but let's go with it. Okay. So, you managed to ra ra you know, raise up some enough people to sort of, because, you know, things have happened like there's been a fire at night. Um, you know, there's been. Um, probably weird noise and, and like outside now the because of the magic going on the the mist has sort of become almost a sort of purpley green color which people started to notice is not a natural mist color at all uh mm -hmm. and um when they look back towards the warehouse even though it's flaming they can also see like tendrils of like purpley blue energy magic um coming from the warehouse too and so everyone's like yep that looks like something we should definitely burn to the ground um so yeah, you, you're able to lead a rabble of people back. Now the, the warehouse is already pretty well inflamed um, by the time you get back there. Um, I will say I, I will give you the benefit. Say that the woman managed to sort of wake up and, fr and flee the uh, uh, the place. Um, Suck yeah, it by more. The by the by the town by the time the, uh, the by the time the crowd gets there, yeah, the, the building itself they they will also throw more pitch onto it as well. Mm -hmm. um the, nothing from inside is getting recovered basically the, the, the if there was anybody inside they're burning to death um if anybody fled they fled while you were uh getting the crowd no sign of the demon um yeah, yeah. uh i mean pretty soon the guard will be turning up too so what do you want to do i need to start a whisper campaign among the angry rabble here um I loudly shout about Tugen that this that he would this I, I mean everyone here has noticed that the green mist is magical right that's why we're getting yeah. worked up so I shout that this is the work of Johannes Tugen um he was performing a live sacrifice this is an evil sight I'm hiding my face but holding up my amulet of Sigmar my warhammer on my chain um, and saying, you know, like, find Tugan, uh, uh, burn Tugan's offices, burn the offices of, um, who's this guy that we keep trying to kill, but could never find? Well, no, no, uh, well, well, Steinhager. We, Steinhager. No, burn the Steinhager house, find them all, find the eight members of the Ordo Septenarius who are evil magic casters. Uh, find them and kill them all. They're, they're behind everything that's happening tonight. They're behind all the burnings. James, I'm doing a full-on riot to overthrow the authority okay. of this city. <laughs> okay. so, so my question for you is, once you've done this, are you trying to flee the city tonight? Are you trying to stay and be involved in this? Like, what, what, is, what, is, what is your plan? I'm leaving, motherfucker. I'm not going to get accidentally murked. Like, I will I write so. I will write a letter to send to several people. You know, like, I will send it to the mayor, although we think the mayor's in on it. Just, just like the captain of the guard. I mean, I think all these people are in on it, but I just send letters explaining what happened well, to everyone. I, I, so I, I think now, with, with, with all the chaos going, there are no, there are no message carriers around it right now. Yeah. So you I can think like while, you can stick notes under doors, but yeah. While uh, Ludger is like riling up the crowd and stuff, Dirk is getting two horses, <laughs> just straight up stealing <laughs> two horses. It's a good call. Okay. Wait, didn't we? Well, hold on. Didn't we have some sort of out with the the boat people? Yeah, you can you can you can go back to um the boar uh, belly? Go back to the boat if you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're already used to leaving in the middle of the night with us. <laughs> 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 this would be nothing new for them. Uh and probably as someone who is on a very burnable boat, they don't want to be near a, a dockside warehouse that's burning. Um I think that's a better option than getting or stealing well, I mean stealing horses is a very serious crime. We'll be put to death for that. Um, and we won't be put to death for everything that's happened here. Oh, we didn't commit any crimes. That was justice. What you're talking about is a crime. Um, 
look, we got to stick with the guys we know. Plus, we'll be able to make some coin on the road. <laughs> yeah, on the way back. Uh, so I'll tell you what I'm going to do, James. I'm going to go to the one corrupt authority that I don't think is corrupted by the Ordo Septenarius and is available to us at this time of night. I'm going to find some sort of dock master. Okay, no worries. I'm going hey, look, to pay there's, them some money. There's, there's, there's fires in the dock, so they're out and about. So Yeah, I'm going to pay them some amount of money that you will tell me, and I'm going to have them send letters to the head of the church, to the woman in the church, who I will get the name of in a moment that knew that everyone was behind anything. I think her name was, no, Abartwart was the cl Ramona Mathis. Yep. I'm sending it to Father... Uh, not Alpret Kessel, not Gordy Gurnanson, uh, not a dwarf. Why did I not write this guy's name down? It, I mean, the name doesn't matter, right? It, we send it to that guy. We send it to Falco Schmidt, the head of the Agriculture Committee. We send it to the Magister, Magistrate Richter. We send it to Deputy Kosman. Okay, uh, so, so this, this guy's so this dog master is both greedy and unionized. So it's one one shilling per. Letter you want to send one shilling is that silver? Yeah, silver. Okay, I'll send the six letters. Okay, one, two, oh, three. The end, you nice. five, six. <laughs> yeah, amazing. I uh, I congratulate on him on his perspicacity and capital gain. I hand him six shillings and six letters to you know important people who may or may not be corrupt, but my god, Ramona Mathis. You got to take the torch for me. Take the torch <laughs> my friend used to burn down that warehouse and burn the corruption out of the city with it, Ramona. You're the only one I can rely on. Maybe Falco Schmidt. Is he a bad guy? We don't know. We don't know shit about him. We only know he's on the agriculture committee. <laughs> Falco's going to blow the lid off this whole conspiracy while we're gone. <laughs> you, th this adventure makes me feel like we are setting up for another adventuring party. <laughs> yeah, to come in here and, and, and Why did the docks shit? burn down? Where is Counselor Tugan? You have to piece together this mystery. Who is okay. Falco Schmidt and why is he so important? <laughs> okay, and then you're, heading, then you're heading back to Joseph and the Barabelli, yes? Yeah, just telling him we need to get out of here immediately. Okay. Well, you know, yeah, he, he, well, he, his, his next stop is Vesebrook. So as long as you have to go to Vesebrook, he, he will take you on his ship. Well, James, you tell us. Are we happy to go to Vesebrook? Sounds like you are. So. Is there any chance it's on the way to Tissentossen? Uh, let me look back at the, um, the map. Is it on the road to Viridian is it, City? Is, is it? Is it to the next? Uh, to the next section of this of this uh, adventure path? Yeah, that's what we're asking, but we're trying not to be super meta about it. Yeah. <laughs> so, so Vesebrook is where. So, Altor is where you started up here. Yes. That hasn't loaded yet, yet, but. Here. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Um, it loaded. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So outdoors up here. Bogan down here. Vesebrook, you actually pass through on the way uh, down. So oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Oh, so we're going back. Uh, yeah. And so where and you were trying to get to? Um, Tissen wherever. Tossin. Yeah. Wherever that guy is. Tissen Tossen. I don't even know. What Tissen well, the Tissen Tossen is the name of the prince that I was assigned to, who like disappeared into the mountains. I okay. Think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in any case, Vesebrook is where uh, the boat's going. You're headed, so. yeah, you were headed south toward the Grey Mountains. Yeah. Oh, it's Father Altor was the master of initiates. That's who I sent my other letter to. Yeah. Any, well, we'll just assume that, you know, you leave, you head, you're heading north on the, on the river for now. Yeah. And then, you know. Tessa well, Tessa is a place, off. it's not the name of the prince. Is yeah. it? Yeah, it's Prince Heirgard von Frick of Tissentassen. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, that's, that's where he's from. Yes, yeah. from Tissentossen, but he's heading yeah. to the Grey Mountains. Okay, so yeah, we can we can like get off somewhere like at Tross Tross Route Tross Route, mm -hmm. which is just north of uh, sure. And then, although it seems like a waste, ah, no, we'll we'll get we'll get money for uh, for working the working the barge, I guess. I mean, I feel like. There's a good chance we may want to just go back to Altdorf and get new orders. Yeah. My orders were to follow you on your journey, and we have full on blown open a conspiracy that needs to be taken back to Altdorf. Hey, by the yeah, way, we just got we just got two hundred. I know. Uh uh 
How do I spend this? Balance. You need to receive it first, don't you? Yeah, I did. How do I spend it to get holy visions? Okay, so... Uh, oh, here we go. I got it. Yep. Get this talent. Yes. Not enough experience available. Let me see. Uh, uh, tell me you haven't received it yet. I think we had this problem last time. I can, I can just up you to XP. So, yeah, so let me see yours. Yeah, so it hasn't given you the XP. I'll, I'll just fix your total up to 430. Uh, and now you should be able to, now you should be able to do it. Oh, no, I got it. Oh, no, okay, okay, now I'm going to put it down again. <laughs> <laughs> I swear I pressed it. I saw it appear. All right. Um, and then, so with, with buying, like, uh, so I just bought Warrior Born. Will that yep. automatically adjust that, uh, that stat? Uh, let's see. It looks like I don't think it has though, because because you, you were 30, 30 before plus five, weren't you? So yeah, I have to manually adjust it again, because so. yeah, because it it the 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 talent calls out that it. Uh, oh, okay, that's good. I I adjust five, it and then yeah, there we go. I'm sorry. Yeah, a five a five yeah a five bonus to your initial. Okay, yeah, that yeah. looks more more accurate. Yeah, cool. That's right now. Okay. Okay. I, just got, okay, so I just got quite a bit better at fighting. <laughs> yeah, sorry. How do I increase my skills and uh, tributes? That's, okay. Oh, um, yeah, okay. Yeah, that, that actually... That's, that's right. Yeah, yes, that's really that is correct, correct now. Yeah. Okay, so what you should do is with your... Um, you should see there's pluses over your um, the attributes you can increase. So, for example, for you... Oh, yes, toughness. Toughness and willpower. Yes, so I think to do it, you just put it. You put a number of advances into the advances part, and it should spend the XP automatically. Oh, interesting. To a maximum of five advances, and that once you've done five, that's the you've done that. Okay, so it's if I do, five. if I put a two in here, how much does it spend? Advance costs twenty five. If you hold yes. over that, yeah. If you hold over the thing, it will. Um. Okay, you you got to click on the you got actually got to click on the plus. It looks like sorry. Yeah. No, it's working for me. If I change it from three to four, it says spend 25. Okay, cool. And then you've also got skills that you can uh, have pluses that you can be put up to okay. from, your, from your career. What do I use toughness for? I'm not sure I really want to increase toughness that badly. But willpower has come in quite handy. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay, you said I can raise skills the same way? Yep, so you should have, I think you've got most of your skills are already maxed. It's really law, theology, prey, research are your ones that are... So what do I need to go to the next so level in order, of... to in, in order to complete your career, you've got to have bought five advances in the three characteristics, um, five advances in each of the skills that have the, have the plus, and have bought all the talents available for that um, for that class. Oh, I see. That's that's to be absolutely complete. You can choose to go up early if you want to. Um, it costs more XP to go up to to take up next rank. The drawback of going up early is that you lose access to any talents you haven't bought. Right, but I already bought the talents. Yep. So I'll tell you, I'll tell you. I feel like lore theology is probably pretty important. Oh, pray absolutely. I want to raise. Absolutely, hundred percent. Want to raise prey as high as it can go. That's very important for me. Yeah. So advancement, um, advancing you through your career. Okay. So to leave, so to leave an incomplete career is two hundred XP. To leave a complete career is hundred XP. So it would actually cost less for me at this. I I think I'm almost complete. I think I have five. I have check marks and. Oh, not not research. What does research get me? And, and toughness. You need to get your toughness up as well. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say... Well, so so you have to spend five in each of the ones that you have available? Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I think so I will just complete that. But... Like once it's a tick, yeah, once it's a, yeah, once it's a check mark, you can... Yeah. What is the research skill? And and same same with skills, right? When it becomes yeah, a tick, right. it's and and you have to you have to do all of your skills as well to complete it. Yeah, all, all your skills, all your all your attributes, and any talents for that for that. Um... Gotcha. Jeez, that's a lot of XP. It is.
Cause, yeah, because you still got Diceman, Marksman, and Strong Back, don't you? As available as talents. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you might not want all those. You might spend the two hundred XP to, to go up without taking those, and they yeah, they, I, they, they they become lost to you then. I feel like Marksman might be worth it if I ever have to make ballistic skills. But so yeah, Strong Back. We just did. Good. We just did have to make a ballistic skill. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so you don't necessarily hear about this, but I'll, I'll, I'll give you guys the, the, the expedition of what happens in Bogenhafen after your departure. Mm-hmm. Um, so Fugan himself, uh, once he realizes that the ritual has been broken, he flees because he knows as the ritual leader, magic will have a backlash and it will be on him. He thinks, you know, if I run as far enough away from the ritual site as possible, I'll be safe. Um, but when, when midnight strikes and the ritual is not complete, wherever he is in the town, um, he suddenly gets surrounded by purplish blue clouds. Um, you know, people that see this see this and they hear screaming from within. And when the clouds clear, there is no sign of, of Councillor Chugan left. Mm. Um, you know, guards, witnesses, etc. So, uh, I mean, by the token of your letters and what people witnessed that night, certainly everyone believes that Chugan was involved in an evil cult um you know the, do they burn uh, down his house and office oh yeah definitely yes um that uh yeah that bogan Harfin has been saved so uh if the ritual had gone ahead it wouldn't have it wouldn't have created um so gideon the demon tricked chugan uh, yes. the ritual was actually to open a demonic portal in in bogan Harfin that would have allowed the forces of zinch to spill out into the city yeah of course um yeah, Gideon, uh, for his failure to Zinch, is called back to the warp and punished in the warp. Um, don't remember yeah. our names and our bloodlines. Right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, for, so, so the only thing I'll give you is that that perception check you didn't make earlier was mm-hmm. when Gideon transformed, he had, he had a ring on that was preventing him from being detected as a demon, and he dropped that ring. So it was the, did you hear the metallic cling right before all the bones start mm. breaking? Because mm. the, the the ring is a potential magic iron that can be recovered, but instead it's melted in the fire. Yeah, yeah. Oh. We could do worse. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm like, you know, a ring a ring that prevents you from or or you know hides your appearance or whatever. Like, I don't know how useful it is. Yeah. It, well, so for any anyone anyone any magic user, it means that they can't be detected as a magic user. Ah, uh, yeah. I guess user. that's yeah, yeah. If we had like a but, wizard's apprentice yeah. or something, like but that. It, but it's valuable. It's a valuable item. I was gonna say if we had a wizard apprentice, they would just firebolt that demon, and we'd have a lot less trouble. But yeah. And, and I, I will tell you, if you did kill um uh the brother and went back to his brother for the pay for the of reward, course like, he wouldn't pay us. I knew that. Yeah. 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 Yeah, he, he just like, he yeah he just goes. Well, we knew it out of character, James. Yeah, but I, I have no right. idea what you're talking about. That's right. That's, yeah. Do you have a contract? Like I said, <laughs> I said to burn the trading house down. By the way, did they yeah. do that? Uh probably. Yeah, I'd say so. Like I'd say yeah, everything fuck you said that they guy. Down, they burn down. Yeah. Good. Good. <laughs> Somewhere out there, Falco Schmidt is the new mayor of the town, having been granted special intelligence of the entire plot. <laughs> He's, uh, he's like the 70 year old guy with like pince nez and he's just like well I'm not re- I was gonna retire next week not really sure okay I guess I'm the mayor now you well, also get a permanent fate point well, you also get a permanent fate point for, um, yes. for saving Bogenhafen nice perfect 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 fantastic so will we return for death of the Reich only time yeah. will tell Yes, we will, James. Just don't try to dig people around with that shit. We know we'll be back. I told you we were willing to go. Here's the thing. I agreed to do this because of Connor Hughes, and he indicated to me that he has never played a single game of Warhammer Fantasy. Not the RPG, not the war game. I was like, I can get someone to run a session for you. And he was like, I haven't watched the show yet. Connor, this whole first book was for you. The rest of the books, I'm doing that for me. <laughs> I should have said that really sassily and threw my hair back and put some sunglasses on, but I don't have long enough hair. So also, I, also, I actually go ahead. Sorry, uh, I was gonna say we we are incorrect. Known as far to the south, uh, southwest, southwest of Bogan. Southwest, so probably not vampires. Uh, well, it is. What? It is still. It is still on the border of uh, uh, the southern provinces, but. Uh, is it near the Grey Mountains by any chance? Yes, it is. Interesting. You'll, you'll see it at the very bottom right corner. Oh, I see it now, and the Grey Mountains are west of there. But that's, um, 
I mean, again, I only know it from Total Warhammer, but that that is the pass that leads to Orc lands and then cuts through the, to the Border Princes, right? Uh, That's pretty far west for vampires. So, no, but, 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 but it, it, like if you keep going in that direction, yeah. Well, so you like Nolan is above uh, the former province of Solund. Um, so so you still have to go pretty far, pretty far south to get to the the border the border princes. Okay, I guess Nuln's probably closer to where um, Balthazar Gelt starts out as legendary yeah. lord. So all right, yeah. So up up here, you can see Talabeckland, home of the Talabeckland Griffins. Yes, that's yeah, right. Uh, that's right. <laughs> well, so I, I know the next, I know the next episode. Oh, is so this episode. is this is just Reichland. Yeah, this. Is oh, just Reichland. okay. Yeah, this. Is yeah, just this is Reichland. nowhere near south enough to be where that. Okay, I understand now. Yeah, you and and you'll see. Um, so you can see on here, uh, the uh, Total Warhammer really scrunches in a lot of these towns, yeah, but, huh? But 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 you'll but you'll see the provinces. Uh, so you see Helmgart, which is what that which that guards that the pass through the the mountains. Um, mm -hmm. and you'll see. Um, uh, I think it's Essel is the the province over on the river, that is like next to Marienburg in Total War. Yeah. Um, and then Carrollburg, which is uh, the Midland province, is across the river. And Grunberg is the other province in uh, in Total War. They just basically. So um, the, the next episode is called Death on the Reich. And I'm pretty sure the Reich is the river that flows from Outdorf to Nuln. Perfect. We're just going to do an Angela Christie make. Yeah, that corrected it. Yeah, <laughs> it is. I mean, do you know it? What's that? It, I mean, death on the River Nile. Oh, different than River Nile. So yes, yeah, Ag yeah. Ag 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 no, it, is it? Um, yeah, it's Poirot. Poirot. Yeah, it's Poirot. Detective yeah, Poirot. It. All right. We've successfully identified as being Belgian. <laughs> yes, congratulations. <laughs> but he did fight in the French army. I agree with you. A lot of people <laughs> fought in the French army. I don't know if you know this, but France has a whole legion dedicated to having people from other countries fight for them. Yep. For foreigners, you mean? Yeah, foreigners. Yeah. yeah. A number of people sign up to serve under the name Napoleon Bonaparte. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So I, yeah. So I have spent. Uh, I've got all my attributes ticked. I just need to get uh, four more advances in play, drum, or fife. Okay. Because apparently that is a that's a that's a vital skill for soldiers. <laughs> Well, so the good news is, if you do if you do leave early your career, you still have access to your skill and attribute increases. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. If you provide you stay in the same career, sorry, like provide you stay on the soldier path. Yeah, and it's yeah. and it's two hundred to leave a career you haven't finished yet. That's right. Yeah, yeah, okay. and, and it's plus an extra hundred if you want to change to a different career path. Yeah, yeah. No, I think so I'll... Become, a, become a magic user or something, you know, or you know, a rat catcher. So, so if you if if you leave if you do a different career path, do you you have to move sideways rather than up? Yeah. So you effectively you move to the bottom of that career path. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. There we go. Any any sort of any final thoughts on uh, enemy and shadow? It's interesting that we I couldn't can... get enough XP to level up, but. Boy, fucking what? stressful, man. Especially what? the climax here. <laughs> what did we miss, James? Oh yeah, okay. great question. So, so let, let me let me tell you first off that I I fucked up um, because I got the timing wrong um, because you're not supposed to arrive on. Effectively, everything was compressed into one day because I had the I had the um, the Sharpen Fest being that night. It's uh... there's supposed to be an extra day, so you're supposed to meet with. Um, uh the guy at the at the golden trout he he meets you and tries to assuage you that everything is fine which i don't think mm -hmm. these characters would really accept yeah um and then the following morning he has his second thoughts and he asks you to come and eat with him at his house mm -hmm. um and that's where you then get framed for his murder because you turn up and he's already dead and you know gideon the the shapeshifter screen body murder and um gets you in trouble with the law there basically mm -hmm. um 
In, uh, I mean, probably the main the main issue was that so chapter eight, which is the prime investigation one, which is probably mm-hmm. played at like the last sort of last session. Yeah. I, <laughs> I, I. So the way that because uh, I bought this on Found, I don't own the book. The way that Foundry presents the book is it gives you the chapters as journal entries uh, in the in the uh, journal part of Foundry, um, and it's quite a short chapter. It's sort of got like you know gossip, events, things that happened prior to the meeting at the Golden Trout. Then it's got a separate folder which is called Primary Locations, and that folder has like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen extra encounters as part of the investigation, which I didn't read. I didn't open the folder and see there's like 13 extra things to look at before the last session. So last session, you know, like, oh shit, there's all these things I'm going to try and cram in, like, you know, going back to the sewers, talking to the guilds, um, going back to the courts, you know, yeah. the meeting, meeting, meeting a group called the Cross Pikes. Like, uh, I, I sort of missed all that. In terms of XP, um, there's not not a lot. So, okay, you know what? I can give you 30 XP because going, going to the Golden Trout was a 30 XP award thing, so you can accept that one there as well. Um, so if, if I look through the XP awards per chapter that you didn't get, mm-hmm. I'll tell you what you missed, that's probably a good way to do it. So, um, hold on, I already interested. left. I'm gonna have to come back in. Oh, okay, get my sick XP. Yeah, get your get you get you get your 30 XP. I will get my 30 XP. I work for it. You think I'm gonna leave money on the table in this economy? <laughs> so and when we when we level up or when we level up when we when we advance down our career path do we also get those new trappings or is that only a character creation yeah so the idea is so okay one of the things with this game is that it's intended to be a downtime so there's actually like a there is a whole downtime mechanic so oh, okay. the whole point would be that we don't pick up next time when you're on the boat having just left Gotcha. Um, okay. Yeah. So there's we been pick some up time... like, like we pick up weeks later, um, and, and you and you get a certain number of downtime actions. And, and this is one of the balancing mechanics. Elves get one less downtime action than everybody else because elves have more stats. Better they're better than everybody else in terms of stats. Yeah. But they have to spend one of their downtime actions basically reconnecting with their elven heritage. Mm-hmm. So they get one. So you can use it to make money. You can use it to get information. Uh, and I, I, I'll probably I'll probably do it rather than uh, okay. I, I'll I'll reread the section and we'll decide whether we do it as. A, a bookkeeping session or we do it offline and we come back with that stuff already done basically okay. um i'll give you an idea about how fun it will how fun it should be basically um so looking at xp so in the first thing which was when you met at the, the coach and the coach and horses in um you get xp for convincing lady is old let you ride the coach which you did uh you get xp if you gamble with philippe and accuse him of cheating um i think nobody gambled with him though um for mistaken identity you get XP for the fight in the um on the road. Mm-hmm. Find the find the letter. Um he did all that. Heart of the Empire. Um for befriending Joseph Quarton, which he did. Uh for not attacking the young nobles that come in and try and start a fight in the bar, for dealing with Max Her- Ernst, uh, and for leaving Outdoor from the Barabelli. These are all sort of five or ten XP award things, basically. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, on to Bogenhafen for the encounter with Adolphus Kostov, uh, which you the one, which is the one you fled, uh, and you get the XP for it. So that, that's where you just let's just get back on the boat and go. Yeah, um, yeah. So you effectively well, we chose the we chose the one the one the one thing that avoided uh, avoided a probable deaths. I yeah. want to point out that fleeing is basically our mo. I don't oh, want yeah, anyone right. to think. 100%. <laughs> I don't want people to think that I would, like read the module and was like, "Oh man, by fleeing." This has continuously been our mo: is intense and, incompetence and, and running. <laughs> well, hold, hold on, intense incompetence. Let's. let's Do you remember start, the first the fight city. we were in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This mercenary so, like, was like brutally murdering people in the background. The two of us are falling down in the mud, just like our arms are on the guy we're fighting. He's like, "What are you guys doing?" <laughs> So, so let me tell you once again this is a game where you start as plebeians you are yes. the heroes at the start of the game oh we know james so, we know yeah. but like that's why that's why our mo is running it's because right now yeah. we suck the the win condition for the final chapter was you disrupt the ritual not yeah. that you kill gideon not right. that you kill um uh, yeah we don't win we don't yeah. win gideon like, doesn't even have combat stats 
because it's assumed that you know it, it's irrelevant fighting because you know you would lose. Yeah. Um, all you need to do, like literally, and, and it's because it's the starting module. It literally says that like this, all you need to disrupt the ritual is either to uh, it's got a whole list of things. Whereas it uh, as long as you either kill children uh, or one of the other people that's in the inner circle, take the scroll that's on his belt, take the ring that Gideon's wearing, um, uh, remove the girl from the like so she's not sacrificed. Knock over one of the candlesticks or disrupt the octogram. Yes. Um, any of those things will disrupt the ritual. If they're already underway, Chugan dies automatically because he's already started the pact with Zeech, which he then fails, and um, uh, and Gideon leaves. So, you know, you, you solve the module as it was intended to be solved. It doesn't feel heroic because it's not a heroic game. Yeah. Like, this yeah. is the Warhammer world, man. Like, <laughs> if, if, if you're like, yeah, I, I run in and I swing my sword at Gideon, it's like, Cool. He catches it, rips your arm off, and beats you to death with it because he's a <laughs> fucking demon. Yeah, I mean, look, if the ritual goes ahead, it's got a whole rule set. Whatever's in the ritual, if you don't stop the ritual, but it's pretty bad for the character. You're making minus forty terror tests, for example. Yeah, I want to point out that my first instinct, without even consulting, one of the few decisions I made without consulting Spoon was throw a bottle of grape juice. <laughs> yeah, which like I, I was, I was, I was on the same track. But I, mine was just a little bit more elaborate. Yeah, it and, also and would have taken more killed, time. I was like, thugs, yeah. yeah, but I, I thought we needed to do it immediately. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, sorry, we got, we got, we got sidetracked from from so sidetracked stuff that uh, from yeah. From I mean, yeah, I was going to say. Yeah, so in terms of like, so chapter five was with where you go to claim inheritance. You did read in there that was just surviving the encounter. Well, it, it survived the encounter. No, nothing, nothing can harm you in that encounter really. But having the whole thing where Rud or Adolphus Kustoff is killed mm -hmm. by it's Gideon that killed him basically. Um, yeah. Then the Sharpen Fest itself. Um, th there are some extra things you can do in the Sharpen Fest, like um, you can try fighting the um, the champion, the ring, for example. Uh, there's XP just for facing him and XP for you to feed him. Mm -hmm. um, you, you free Gotri from the stocks, which is fine. Um, if you actually, if you go to actually visit the, um, like the, the Circus of Freaks, the goblin tries to escape while you're there. So there's a whole chase sequence of trying to stop him. Well, he always, he always gets into the sewers, oh, yeah. Yeah, right. but there's a whole chase scene. Um, where you've got to go through like a bunch of random stuff that, uh, while you're chasing him to the, to the sewer entrance, basically. Yeah. Um, and then and that's when the guard asks you to help track down the goblin because you were there, and they offer, mm -hmm. and they offer you to keep you know, to comp your, pay, comp your um your room if you're there. Um, so that was it for the show. never did get that room. <laughs> um, burn down the town instead. Yeah. Going through, there's other things you can find in the sewers. So you can find that they so, they, so Gotri was their sacrifice. To sanctify the the um, so after he wandered off, remember he, he found like a free a free drink place, uh -huh. and then when you, and then when you came back, the free drink place was gone. Gone. Yeah. They, um, yeah. They they they, they murdered. Hide. Yeah, they murdered him to sanctify the first temple, and they dumped his body elsewhere in the sewers. So, um, there's if, if you explore the sewers, you can also come across a a criminal gang that works in the sewers that they 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 drive you off them, but they later on become a way that you can try and get out of the city because you can go to them to help smuggle you out. That's one of the other ways to leave the city. Um, Chasing Shadows, which was the investigation one. Pretty much... Um, uh, yeah, so so there's things like if you have the Holy Visions trait, you get extra XP for getting visions, but nobody had it yet. Um, ah, damn it. Go to the Golden Trout. It said I got uh, useful traits. Yeah, and then the final one was the resolution where all, all, all there is is 200 XP if you... Um, if you stop the ritual, or 50 XP if you don't stop the ritual and then somehow survive the destruction of Bogenhaar. <laughs> <laughs> like, like the destruction of the town is because, like, literally, it opens a gate of demons to come through, but it takes mm -hmm. time for the demonic army to come through. So, if you mm -hmm. flee straight away, there's a greater chance than if you stop and try and fight, you know, unlimited demons. Unlimited demons sounds like a really sick band. <laughs> yeah. yeah so that's enemy and shadow and, and I, I do like having read this one I, I said i played it a long time ago back in the old Wifrup um hogshead publishing days mm -hmm. um but that, what i like about this one is it's got a whole bunch of they call it grognard boxes mm -hmm. which is basically if you if your group has played this previously 
here's how to change things to throw them off. Like, here's how to make it so that Chugan's not actually the main bad guy. Here's someone else that's the main bad guy. You know, here's mm. how to throw them off. Yeah, someone other, uh, someone other than Gideon. That's the thing. It's just got all these things to make it to freshen it up if you played it previously. You like that. Yeah. But I do like the way they call it grognard, grognard boxes. So, for all the for all the, for all the neck beards that like, no, well, I know this bit. I'm gonna just, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna totally meta knowledge this. I ran Pathfinder Society. I know those people. <laughs> That's all Everyone. I got. That's all I, I, I got to go buy Death in the Reich now. So. <laughs> There it is. We bullied James into spending more money on the two of us. <laughs> I didn't mind spending money. It's my wife that mind spending money. Oh, <laughs> okay. We got we got to figure out a way to be nice to your wife. <laughs> now, look, look, I, 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 if I hadn't said it previously, Cubicle Seven do absolutely incredible the um, virtual tabletop mm -hmm. integration, especially with Foundry. Um, like even now, now that I've got. Um, Imperium Maledictum, once again, absolutely incredible um, uh, foundry uh, mod for it as well. Oh, so, is there? Interesting. Yeah, I asked, should yeah. definitely get it. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I have the rule book. Char character creation built into the mod, for example. So, and it works similar to this where, once again, when you're building a character, you can either, you can roll and take the roll option. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Free yeah. XP, or you can choose and... Okay. You choose, yeah. Yeah. If you're a truly depraved person, you generate a completely random character, but you yeah. get a lot of extra XP look, at look, the end. I worked out with with the Wifrit one here. If you took every single option random, it's enough XP to give you all of your starting advances except for the talents. And all you do is buy the talents before you go up level up. Sure, but you have no uh control over who you are. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> You're the anyone. A laughing harbor master. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, your job harbor. is that's, that's, that's too high a career. No, I was going to say you're, your job is to hire the rest of the party to chase some rats <laughs> off of the dock. <laughs> <laughs> some particularly large rats. <laughs> I, I got to say, like one of the, one of one of my one of the tropes I really enjoy in D and D is when you have a high level group and they go looking for work in a town and you throw low level crap at them. Just because it's like, yeah, that still exists, you know. Yes, you're a level twelve, but they, yeah, the, the the inn still needs the rats cleared out of their out of their their. Uh, their I remember this for GFA, <laughs> and you get no XP for it, you know. But that's why I suggested GFA. We we bring along the other group as our yeah our low level party group to go and send on those. Groups. I was gonna say the well, I'd already dedicated a whole episode to that where I was like, I'm not gonna write up the combat for this. Any of these players could solo. <laughs> A third level enemy, really easily. <laughs> and I'm, I'm sure there's rats in the cellars of uh, Dragon Dragonhold. <laughs> Down that magical well, they're just hanging out there. <laughs> Come on, rats, rats, we are the rats. Yeah, oh, I. It's the first time I've realized. Oh no, I suppose salt, um, uh, octopi are saltwater, aren't they? Yes. We, yeah. Otherwise, we could have a permanent home for the life wielding octopus. You know. I mean, well. he lived. In in land in a landlocked ice born <laughs> they may do up there. They may do. I might surprise you to hear that a legendary ranger has a pretty good nature score. <laughs> yeah. If you're only watching this show and you're enjoying Warhammer my fantasy roleplay, don't forget the sister show to this show, the brew bowl. That's right. I was the gonna say the, the, yeah. the sister yeah. sister show to both of those shows. Rogue Trader, which is somehow one of my most popular shows. Also, one that I don't run myself, which I find hurtful, because the uh, what was the other one that we did with uh, the uh, um, the uh, the Wrath of Glory one, which was yeah, called, not popular uh, at all. Yeah. Who cares what it was people, called? Hey, people just like James. Yeah, I get it. I understand. It's because he constantly dunks on everyone. It, listen, I'm the kind of guy that understands. You know, I try to view the world as negatively as possible. Some people are like, look on the bright side. And I'm like, all I can see is the darkness. <laughs> <laughs> I love the other day where I posted the thing about like streamers having a breakdown. And so it was like, is this a cry, cry for help? help? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, it was a cry for help in 2018. It's been a while since then. 
funny. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, look, I, 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 I think AP people mm-hmm. enjoy watching you run what you enjoy running, and they enjoy watching you play what you enjoy playing. I agree. I I feel like the more selective I am about having people on shows, and the more selective I am about what I'm going to run the more entertained I feel running things. Yeah. I mean, I've been talking a lot lately about Shipbreakers, but I really like Shipbreakers, and I also am going to continue to fuck with the cast immensely. Just absolutely no shits given. It's kind of revenge for Slayer's Night. in a way. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Yeah, pe- people can definitely pick up on the vibe in a game. I know. That, 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 that. I know. Yeah. And I know that uh, I've been told, and I think watching my own shows, uh, I've people say, I can tell that you're not having fun. And I'm like, ah, yes, that's bad. It's bad that you can tell that. Oh. Whereas no one cares if Spoon has fun. I care if Spoon has hey. fun. I recently <laughs> described always, Spoon as fun, man. a man whose hobby is getting kicked in the head. <laughs> really? To who? Intro hour. Oh. Because yeah, you, you were like... I guess I haven't watched it yet. You were like, I'm an amateur MMA fighter. And I'm like, you know, Spoon really came out and said, I'm an amateur MMA fighter. There's not many people you're going to find in the world that say, my hobby is getting kicked in the head. <laughs> Yeah. Like I mean, I think isn't everybody really an amateur MMA fighter? Well, so so no, <laughs> not me. <laughs> like, defend it, Spoon. Go ahead, defend it. It's okay. Oh, well, you know, be, be, there's a, there's a big difference between being a dude off the street and being an, an amateur. MMA. I agree with that entirely. Like, so so when I when I did martial arts, well, so the last one I did, um, we used to have a thing we called windmilling. Uh, so windmilling is what most untrained people do when they go into a fight, which is just arms going everywhere. You know, it's mm-hmm. just I, mm-hmm. I need to throw as many punches at the head as I possibly can, and th- and that that's that's how the average person without training fights. Uh, and it's funny because if you watch some MMA, it, it sometimes it starts to become windmilling. Yeah. Um, you know, when when, you, when you've got an opponent down, it's no longer about technique; it's about how can I just knock the uh, knock the side of this person as much as possible. Yeah. So. You know, wise man day. once said, everybody's got a plan until they get <laughs> punched in the mouth. Yep. <laughs> yep. That's literally what I was about to say. <clears throat> so He's right, though. It is shocking to be punched in the mouth. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yep. There is. And, a, hey, uh... and one thing about the, the head is the head bleeds a lot, too. So if yep. you get a cut in the head, you're going to get blood in your eye, which is both distracting and a psychological effect. And it's hard to stop it. And, and it, it, when people bleed, they think, oh, no, I'm dying because I'm bleeding. Yeah. But there are a lot of blood vessels in the head. That's true. And blood head uh, cuts are off, look worse than they actually are. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. They, they're not, yeah. You're not going to die from blood loss from a cut in your, uh, up here unless you know. So, but you're going to bleed a lot from it. It's going to get in your eyes. So. Yeah. Yeah. And, it, and it'll, look, it'll look like it'll look horrible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's right. That's why they do it in movies a lot, especially yeah. World War II. Yeah. yeah. Gotta have that, remember, you know, head bandage. I don't know if I ever told the story before, but when I was when I was um, learning, so it's something called SKD, spontaneous knife defense, um, mm-hmm. for like close in knife fighting. Um, and they tell you the, f- the first rule of close in knife fighting is that you're going to get cut. If you if you don't believe me, give a toddler a, like a, a marker and then try and take it off them if they don't want to give it to you. Yep. You know, uh, <laughs> they're like, like this the whole time, and you're gonna get you're gonna get marker on your arms. You know, so yeah, yeah, the yeah. No, nobody wins a knife fight. It's just yeah. somebody doesn't lose. <laughs> but sometimes everyone loses. I, I was telling my wife recently about uh, she was talking about uh, uh, evacuation policy at a hospital because they, they have they have an order of which they try to get people out of the hospital, mm-hmm. and that is they they try to get so amb- self ambulant people get them out first because they can you can get them to help other people you know. Yep. Then you get out the people who require aid, so who might need a wheelchair or need help standing. Then next, then the people who are unconscious, you know, in beds, whatever. And then finally, the people who are like actively aggressive or trying to prevent you or trying to, you know, because you, you have that in hospital, you have people that just, you know, are, are actively working against you. Mm-hmm. And I said, you do realize you can, you can upgrade aggressive people to unconscious people, though, right? 
to <laughs> upgrade this guy. They move they move up the continuum then, so yeah, exactly. Sure. That's one way to look at it. I've I've worked in hospital security. I, I you know, more, more than yeah. once had to be in a you know, had to put a five point restraint on, you know, so people be um, crazy, man. Interesting. Are we good for Wednesday? Uh yeah. so I, I am not because I am traveling now for two and a half weeks. So uh, I'll see you I, in I, three I, I, weeks. I, 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 I'm home weekends, and mm-hmm. I've organised blood bowl around when I'm sort of got like a break in travel or stuff. Mm-hmm. But um, uh, yeah, like so, it, like basically because obviously Wednesday is my Thursday, and the next two, next three Tuesdays and two Wednesday, next three Tuesdays for me and two Thursdays, I am um, going to be at these road shows. So yeah, we have a, have a, a break long enough for me to buy the module, read the module, perfect, and work out how to do downtime properly. Gotcha Works for me. All right, get ready to blue book. Uh, blue book. Closing thoughts for this recording. Man, uh, Sigmar really had our back in this. Yeah, one. for I real. Every every time <laughs> that you were we like, needed hey, it, he showed Sigmar. up. Yep, and then you rolled really well. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I needed that luck for the upcoming Blood Bowl game, and I'm not going to have it now. <laughs> <laughs> Janus oh, is going to hit me with that strength six, and I'm just going to get crushed and die. <laughs> so I, I take you guys haven't finished the uh, haven't finished the vampires match yet. Vampires. Outcome. I only got through the intro with the bonitis. Yeah, I am <laughs> uh, forty minutes in. Okay, have you at least picked up yet? AP that the 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 make a wish child, make a dream child has a, a chainsaw. <laughs> no, that's amazing. <laughs> what a fucking lunatic. <laughs> I love it. so like he's... he keeps losing, but I like Lord yeah. Hunger, man. Yeah, yeah. I think I think he is I'm worried one he's gonna most... leave at the end of the season with like a zero eight record. He's gonna be like, fuck this game. I think he has easily been one of the most entertaining additions to the to the cast. Um <laughs> Yeah, the make a the make a dream foundation is, is fucking so great. And then Lawson's reaction when he goes, "Did you say 11? Yeah. <laughs> and I went, I went. The only thing that's gonna make this better is is if this if this if this like make a dream foundation kid dies in the match, but he does not. No. He's got 40 days to live, which means he's around for the next six rounds. Yeah. If anyone wants, yeah. To, take, anyone wants to take him. Yeah, <laughs> make, yeah, make a second dream. We're now Martin Luther King's second dream. Yeah. <laughs> now there's the Dimension 20 reference for you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, not, not even Dimension 20. That's a that's a game changer. Uh, all right. I'm going to go work on my house. All right. All right. My, 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 my old house, because I, I lose access to it tomorrow. My fence goes up. Mm. So. I'm going to work on sleeping. Yeah. It's an incredible achievement. Friends Enjoy. at home, I hope that you also sleep. <laughs> Have a good time zone. <laughs>